serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And I'll turn right back around Give me one reason to stay And I'll turn right back around Said I don't want to leave you lonely You gotta make me change my mind
make me change my mind. Hey, morning, everybody. So let's see, we've got Scat Pag, Mad Shad, Blackbird, Nanya, Savage. Morning, morning. Uh, let me do the polite thing here. There. So I, I don't know, it won't be a very long one. Um, but just people had reached out and Wondering how things were going, and so I just figured, well, couldn't sleep, so here I am. And I don't know, man. I've been doing a lot of things around here, and and so I don't feel real good because I, I just I, I, there's things I've got to try to get done before the rain season. Because I just, I don't know that the house is going through another major flood again. Grandbaby's doing pretty good. The uh, catheter's been removed. Hadn't been very, wasn't happy at first about all the soreness then. Before that, he was okay. I don't get too many updates. Hey, Canadian. All right, make it a good day. But I will say one thing I've just kind of, as I started doing things, physically felt like shit. But man, and I don't mean this as any uh, direct thing or anything, but once I kind of stepped away for a little bit of just the doom, gloom, look how corrupt and bad it all is, woe is me. I say that part felt a lot better kind of getting out of that muck because that's just not usually where I exist. I don't, I'm not a, I don't know. I ain't sat around and whined and griped about shit for decades and decades. And I just, there's, so it was kind of, it was a nice detachment, you know. Hey, Eric, good morning. I just don't, I haven't felt really good, but uh, every day I try to go out and I do some stuff. And uh, I get to hurting and my patience level is like I have none. So I try to stay away from people when I get to feeling too bad because I'm, um, 
it's when my assholeness can come out. Uh, that's not a very, I'm not a proud moment. I did notice that this, this whole social media really has changed, started to, started to change my persona almost. Um, I just, and I don't know, hadn't a big, I wasn't a big fan of this in the past, you know, the way things seem to be going and shit. And it's just like, yeah, this isn't really, this isn't my forte. And it's it started out kind of had that little momentum and that's why I was doing things, built the chicken coop. But then I noticed that it kind of lulled while I noticed that everything I was taking in was in a lull. There was no progression. And so I started to feel like I wasn't, I was spinning in the mood. And so I just, I've got to disconnect from that. So. Because if I, you know, you, every day you start your day off with just how corrupt the government is. Well, it's like, that's not rocket science. You know, okay. But it's just, so what do you, you know, and it's just like, man, to think of the negativeness that just kept going into every day. And then you kind of got this negative shit around you, kind of like the little Linus dust bowl thing, you know. I got you, Nanya. But see, here's my thing is, is, I mean, how many times a day for a week do you have to hear about that? I mean, did it, when you first read that, did not already have the emotional thing like, holy shit, I can't believe you'd do that. But instead of that occupying, we'll just give it a good 10 minutes to round it out to an even number, 10 minutes of your time. As that carries over and you start adding up these five minute, two minute, five minute, three minute, two minute, five minute. Next thing you know, you realize you got hours invested in the same shit over and over again. And you kind of go, hmm. And I just realized once I kind of pulled back, had to really focus because that shit takes a lot of effort. Hell, that's like foot and a half weeds. I got to try to weed eat, try to rake them up. Got the chicken coop reposition got the little one stationed out there got these little chicks got this cage moved back in and you just get to doing these things and then you realize that wow all day long i haven't thought about ukraine you know so because i already know there's a problem i need i'd rather focus on a solution instead of just stack it stack it stack it stack it I just, it's not me, man. I just can't do it. The new babies are doing pretty good, Skip. Back. They, uh, they're actually a rather trip, and I feel really bad for them because there's only two, and I think maybe that kind of jacks with them. Because, yeah, they acted totally different than the other ones. I like farm. It all goes away. Yep. Hey, Lady Smith, top of the morning. I don't know about all that, ma'am. I think you got to just leave the dust on the lens. Morning, Matt. We can change to see of the positive thing. Yep. So it just, I don't know. And so I just realized, you know, I mean, and I ain't got nothing against nobody don't give a shit, you know. But I just, I really realized, because, man, it's like I got so much to try to get done that it's like, I, you know, I, it's kind of like that damn commercial. Ain't nobody got time for that. And so I just realized it's like, you know what? No, if anything, I just want to, I want to focus on like some of the shit that the states are doing, you know trying to prevent some of the corrupt shit that's going on, some of the illegal shit that they've been doing, you know, just the positive stuff, the per, the moving forward instead of, I don't know, just spitting tires in the mud is what it's like. Yeah. 
hopefully y'all got your coffee. I uh, appreciate you, Nanya. Am I going to I want you to know I have met a lot of good people. Oh, yeah. Man, I ain't trying to sound like negative. I'm just saying this is me. You know, it's just just my I came into this whole little social media in a in an angry, depressive state. Met a few people and over time. Came out the depression, chilled out on the anger. And then kind of got productive, actually, because that's where the whole chicken came into play was literally listening and watching people. And that's, you know, Hutch building stuff. Milk May was out there farming. You know, there was just there were people that were things native in his garden stuff and D dog garden walks and ghost in them canning. So it just was kind of like, yeah. And I'm not knocking like many of those people. I'm just saying that this is where I came in out of depression. Then all of a sudden I come into this. I'm like, yeah, you know, I need to get up and do something. So I did. But then I found myself to like the past, I don't know, six months, eight months, the last within the last year, it's just kind of slowly then tapered back off. And I just didn't see it then. Now that I've kind of reflected back, I can see it. But I just. I don't know. Spent more time getting mad about shit again. And I just, it's me. It's just, that's, that's, this is what I need. So I need more positive shit and I'll try to push forward. The. That's where I'm at. So I just did not, everybody, people had reached out to me and made one to make sure everything was okay and how things were going and. So that's why I just wanted to let people know. It's like, I got nothing against nobody. I pretty much wrote off any previous shit. I don't care. I got bigger fish to fry, more shit to worry about. So I'm just not quite sure what I'll do. Cause I don't know what kind of time frame or. And I just, I don't know. Of course, I have coffee. The world likes me better. Right, Blackbird. <laughs> so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And I just, all I can say, I, my only recommendation to anybody that would ever listen to this or that ever hear it is just take things in, in small doses. That word gluttony does not apply to just drugs, alcohol, food. It's everything. You know, probably need to do anything in excess. And some of the, and I, I get it because sometimes, you know, it's just like you're, you start to hear somebody doing what we would think is like a motivational, which is to drive you to do something productive towards a solution. But nowadays it's like most motivational kind of shit is just a regurgitation of anger. Yeah, they fucking suck. And then it's like everybody like, yeah. And it's kind of like that mob mentality thing. And so you just got to watch that, man. I, I say that. I, You know, I say you got to watch. I, I retract the statement. This is one thing that I try to focus on is to never get caught up in a mob mentality. And I've actually said this for a year and a half, two years, two and a half years. You can watch the whole BLM Antifa bullshit that went down. And the, there was a good portion of intentional agitators, instigators, pieces of shit. But there were also people that were caught up in the emotional anxiety, stressful wave. Hey, ESTP. Morning. What's up, Hillbilly? I guess I could increase the font. Anyway, I just, that's one thing I've really, just these past few days are just kind of a reset in a way. Cause it's kind of like, yeah, I got to focus on solution. You know, that's, 
thought I was kind of doing that before, but I don't think I was really, I think I was trying to dance in both worlds and that's just not pick a dance floor and, and get to stepping. Sorry, I just, that's just where I'm kind of at nowadays. So that's what's been happening. I've, had to get a been trying to weedy. I got to clean, get this stuff away from the house. I got to get this little ditch finished cleaned out. Then I got to start working on the backside. I don't, I'm going to try to get to the landscape timbers. I don't, I'm, that's my goal. My goal is to just move forward until I can finally get to those landscape timbers and start lining them down the side. Because usually our little phrase down here is April showers bring May flowers. Well, it usually just keeps raining on into May too. So, and that's usually the torrential side. That's when we get the soakers and I don't need the soakers. I'm not sure that this, this is going to survive. As you can tell, you can look in the corner right up there, ooh, up there and you can see the cracks in the wall from that corner. And that's this thing. It just, it's just, Said no way no park up me. So I just gotta tend to some shit. Let me see. Started my spring cleaning thing. Get this place in some kind of shape so when the real spring arrives, play outside every day. There you go. Weeding, eating, and mowing has begun in earnest. Yep, Savage. When are the guys? Uh, that's. It's not, Scat. We're getting dumped on now. 50 mile an hour winds. Damn. That shit must have moved up that way. Hey, morning, Miss Angel. Hey, Hutch. Billy. So I just, I don't know. Yeah. We got the rain. Wait, was it? Oh, YouTube had to let me know I was live. Anyway, I got to tend to the rain thing and then after I can get the timbers going down the side, then I was going to try to start bracing some up. I, I'm not worried about level no more. I don't give a shit. I just don't have to fall while I'm around. That's I forgot. We were just talking yesterday or the day before she came outside while I was doing stuff and she said something. And, oh, I talked about because there's a damn little oak tree that's growing in the flower bed at the front corner of the house. And it's I got to move it. I just don't want to kill it. But uh talked about moving it out there by the light pole. And she's like, well, it'll just grow up and get in the way of the light. And I said, you know what? That might be in 10 or 15 years. And I really don't give a shit because I hope I'm not here in 10 or 15 years, to be quite honest. This place sucks now. It'll suck even more then. And I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that online. I'm not trying to discourage nobody. Morning, Miss Metal. The grass and weeds will get high enough to get lost in. Then it gets full of fleas and ticks. Then it dies, turned to tender enough to burn on a whole village. Yep. Well, that's why I tried it, man. It just it got out of control. And see, and that's... Oh, no, it's what you make it, Skepak. That's why I shouldn't have said that out loud. That's totally personal thing. Mowing is an ordinance. You greatly increase the chances of your shipment. Well, I got to tell you now, Savage. 
somebody come pulling in to tell me that it's mandatory that I mow, I'm liable to let that shit grow to five feet tall just out of spite at that point, just because I, I don't know. I don't I don't like people coming and telling me how to do my shit. I'd probably even as much as I'd hate it, I'd probably do it just out of spite. I'd probably go out there and throw miracle grow on that shit just so it'd grow faster. There's just some about them city words called ordinances and shit. Seven right may have to bail on first cut this in. Hey, Moonchild. I mean, I'm sorry, it probably won't be a very entertaining one this morning because I didn't really have no music lined up. I wasn't even going to really do it. and I think I got up about 1.30 or 2. I sat in here and I, let's see, what did I do? Oh, I watched Angry Cops and Fat Electrician. They had a little live recorded. I watched it some and then watched a... Uh, Oh, shit, what was that? Not Tombstone. Wyatt Earp. And then just sat here and just kind of, it's been pretty much miserable nowadays. We had tornadoes two days ago. Today we may get snow. <laughs> Damn. I'm full of joy and happy. I just wish my friends were with me. Hey, there you go. You just spread the wealth, Scat Pack. Let your smile or just broadcast around you. My wife tells me that a lot. Some of our pets are only two. The other is already 18 and 20. Well, I'll live her. <laughs> I got great news. My daughter got married two days ago. Hey. Right on. Hey, yeah. Mower broke in 2020. Haven't mowed my yard since. Just doing my part to redneck up the neighborhood. There <laughs> Well, thank you, Blackbird. I just don't like that word ordinance. Ordinance. Man, the only time I want to hear something about an ordinance is if you're going to blow something up. But all this ordinances of to do's and don't do's, and that's that city shit. No offense to nobody in the cities, man, but y'all live in some batshit crazy stuff. A broken down John Deere in the front yard. Hey, there you go. Hey, man, that'd be that'd be classic yard art down here, here, Billy. Hell, people would probably pay to put that in their yard. <laughs> She's now a military wife. Oh, there you go, Scat. Ain't done shit in two days. Wind, wet, and cold. Oh, damn. Man, I don't need the rain to start here. We had that little bit of rain. And I, I was trying to get out there and much done. Then it rained. It wasn't as bad. So then I went out and I started cleaning underneath the carport where I could get to. Once it dried up, then I started kind of getting out. And I was actually so going to move the chickens last night to another spot. I just went, man, I hurt so damn bad. That's why I don't know. I won't sit here too long, no offense, but I just. My legs are getting real bad. So. It's just the shit you deal with. I learned to drive a 62 Ford pickup with three on the tree. Hell yeah. Yeah, Connecticut John Deere. It's probably pretty. That's it. It probably runs. It just decided not to do anything. Is what happened. And I'm sorry. I shouldn't have joked. My bad. I 
Sound like a good time to become one with the stereo, right? I don't know if I'm maxing out the bone shards of my gums. Oh, there. Hey, there you go, Savage. I try my over it, but hey, Eclipse. Oh, the Eclipse. I grew flowers in an old toilet to piss off the neighbors. Hey, Blackbird, I was actually fixing to do that with two. I was going to take and paint on the back of the tanks, his and hers. Correct time zone equipment doesn't work in commie land at science. Those two little birds or something else. Well, I just, I don't know. So have y'all been doing all right? I guess Hutch has been cold and in the rain. I guess Hibbley's in the rain now. Lady must have been in the rain. They're, they're doing good, Miss Middle. Uh, they're kind of a weird little pair. So, in the tub down there, they were fine. Then when I brought the big one in, I put the brooder down there in that corner where it was with the other bunch, and they would not go down there for nothing. They stayed right up here by the corner. And uh, I had to move the brooder up to this front corner. So, it's kind of there really weird. I think the little black one is a rooster, though. It's either that or that's a hen with an attitude. Because I will say one day I reached down there and did my finger like that on the little bit of the feed that was on the floor. And and he come out with his all neck all bowed up. Oh, hell, he just, just jumped up on top of the brooder for the first time. Well, dang, look at you, little man. Your grandson doing good. Yeah, the last I had heard with him, he uh, the catheter came out. After the surgery, they had a catheter in him, so they took that out. He wasn't overly enthused the first uh, day, it sounds like, after they took that out. But now, it's the last I heard he's doing good. That's I don't get many updates on that. What's up, little mate? Yeah, he's on top of the brooder just looking at me now. I don't know if it's because he thinks he's lost or. Got some good news from my accountant getting refunds for the last three years, just waiting for it to hit the account. Hey, look at you, Eric. There you go. Just when you kind of needed that little helping hand, there it was, huh? Well, in a way, Blackbird, in a way, if it was because you're not getting news because, you know, there's nothing but to. Until then I'm broke. Yeah, but you got, you got a, you got a um, sunrise on the horizon. Come here, let's go say hi to the people. Let's go say hi to the people. There you go. You don't know it, but you're on the internet. The World Wide Web is looking at you. Some kids might even see a resemblance in a chicken nugget. But not yet. Because he's a big guy. Yep, you're going to grow up to be a big guy. So there's... Yep. 
This is a little dude with attitude, I think. He got the collar. Yep. All right. Come here. There you go. That's a little black one. The yellow one's underneath the brooder. I'd have to pick that up and pull, pull her out. No, freak her out. He's getting all frisky, so he jumped on top of the brooder. Hey, morning, Gmo Nana. Anyway, I, I don't really. I don't really got nothing else. You're pretty much caught up now. I'm just... Morning, will you? Yep. Trying to uh, get some stuff set up so I can... I'm going to try to plant some shit. I just don't know. I'm going to take Folgers cans. I got a bunch of the coffee can, Folger cans. And I'm going to kind of take a board and screw the back lip of them and have them kind of hang at an angle. And I figured I'd do a rack of those and then try to plant. I guess they ought to grow tomatoes. You don't need very big containers for tomatoes and stuff. I could do that or cucumbers you know I've had to work so I'm in standby I won't start my chore until she's all good oh there you go savage fence wire to resecure over it Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Middle. More cool, simply, Tony. Yeah. That little pair there. Which the other five out there, there's there's something else. I but man, I don't know. I just don't know how to integrate them. I hope that goes well. Yeah, I don't. Uh, the agenda today is I've got to try to finish raking down this little drainage ditch beside the house and getting the weed eating done, putting the tall weeds and shit. So I got to try to weed eat that and then rake that ditch out. And then, who knows after that? Because that's the problem, man. I can go out. And that and like some of the stuff, my damn chair goes dead too fast because I don't think it can handle the grade. I think that all those commercials are done on flat surfaces in Florida or some shit. Because, man, it don't take long with the grade. And all of a sudden, hell, I got to sit out there and wait a minute and do little charges up the ramp just to make it to the door. Hell, she had to kind of help push me in the door the other day because the damn battery, no bueno. Yeah, I'm going to 
I'm trying to figure out how I can do a stationary type pen for them. That way they can. Uh, man. Just uh, tons of shit to do. And I just do little things at a time. Then it's like lay down for a few hours, sit here for a few hours. I sit here until my, my legs get to aching. Then I go lay down until my back and my gut get to aching. And then I can just, it's the cycle, man. Oh, the, the vines. Yeah, the maters, man. That's what I was really hoping, but I need a. I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. That's the growing thing, unfortunately, is a little farther down. I'm The biggest concern right now is I've got to get the front of the house and this side cleaned off and at least handle the flowing water. And then I've got to work on the wall on this side, get it cleaned up and get a wall put in so water can't run underneath. And then I'll figure out if I manage to make it that far, then I got sunflowers I want to plant in the front. Mrs. Hutch gave me sunflowers. I just want a whole wall of sunflowers up there in the front. Sounds like me. I don't sleep but three, maybe four hours before being still hurts or I roll over on something. Right, Savage. I got my head on now, just here trying to bypass them. <coughs> Excuse me. I was shooting for the first time, didn't turn out while she's mad at me. Uh oh, what happened, Blackbird? No, that should have been fun. Get him hooked on the smell of gunpowder. Vines like air and draw from the source. Oh, don't do tomatoes and cucumbers by each other. I'm going to kind of try to do a little fence thing over them until they get bigger. Savage is what I was hoping to do. Keep the birds at bay. I don't know. I have a bag of seeds that are like a illusion of grandeur. And I'm like, man, look, if I could plant that stuff. And that's why the raised beds, I, you know, who knows? I don't know if I'll finish the damn things. Eventually, I probably will. She broke two rules right off the bat, so it's back to basics. Oh, shit. Maters get tall and bushy. Well, that's why I got some tires. I got four tires I was hoping to do some taters in eventually get those just laid out and put some put some hay in it and start doing it and just kind of keep adding i got four tires i figure if i did two stacks then that ought to give me a good little deep thing of potatoes keep your peppers away from the tomatoes the tomatoes will come out spicy hey that might be pretty pretty dang good though
chronometers and a bale of hay too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, James. Jay? James. My bad. Jay. Morning, Jay. Madison Township, Ohio. Have a great day, everyone, and work safe. Work smarter, not harder. Well, sometimes working hard is kind of fun, too. been trying to rearrange a little bit in here to get a a little bench set up I want to try to start making some little plaques so I've been trying to do that um, do I have, I have some kind of song back here. I know I do. Well, here, there's the Mrs. Metal song. We'll do this one for now. I need just a moment. I'll be right back. Two, three. Hey, more in deplorable, dusty, Michigan.
Good morning, Sherbert. And yeah, I was scrolled up. I saw where Lee Smith talked about a pile. And I had thought about that. I was just thinking of if I did the tires, it keeps shit from digging in it, you know. Which I would like fence in the whole damn place. I totally do. A damn 16 foot privacy fence would be fine with me. I wouldn't give a shit. Although I do enjoy the deer. Armadillers are kind of cool to watch too. But the random drop off dogs and shit, not so much. You don't know where your coffee comes from, Billy? He is doing good, deplorable. That's uh he got his catheter out. Wasn't very happy with the soreness after that, but supposedly now he's he's doing he's doing better. Oh, yeah, and I guess some of y'all saw the picture that I put up of the business card. This is the business card. Damn, it won't focus. Ain't that some shit? Come on, focus, damn it. Yeah. There it goes. And you want to see how old this card is? You see how old that card is? Now, if you know, you know. You There's one thing on this card that really makes the date of this card stand out. Does anybody catch that? It's the phone number, man. When was the last time you saw a phone number like that? Phone number W028433. And even back then, they knew there was a difference. At one point, you'll be able to read it because it came in focus. It just took me a minute. Surprised Holly Hobby Hammer. We used to have a star route address. I just thought we were going through stuff. And I was I was burning old papers and stuff. And uh pulled that out of the and I was like, check that out. I thought, man, is that not by hitting for 2024? Here's an old ass business card from the early 60s. And it's like, even then they knew there was a difference. Yeah, sure, Bear. I mean, it just, um, and I, I don't, I probably won't be on every day and stuff. I don't know. I got to try to really get this stuff done and, if I'm hurting, I ain't going to get on. 
because all I'm going to be is an asshole. Because that's the more I hurt my patients goes. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have much. I'm just a cantankerous old person that feels like shit. People probably thought zip code was the mark. Right, STP. Well, what was cool was uh, Biox, the BXO, XO, what, 77? He, uh, he said he delivers paint for that RM. So that company, he delivers paint for that company, RM. So that was kind of cool. Whenever he saw that picture, he goes, oh, wow. So that, that paint company is still in business. Show you a, a running product right there because hell, box is up in New York. I'm down in Texas, that was Port Arthur, Texas. He's, yeah, but it ain't it ain't it ain't always all smiles, Miss Metal. So I just I don't know. It is what it is. I just have so much to do and and you know, I was gonna try to stream while I did this stuff, but then Just down there. What kind of plaques are you making? Well, I don't really know. I was just going to kind of make some. I thought I might make some like clucking Alamo kind of little plaques and see and then kind of just see where it kind of goes. I might can make personal ones, personalized ones. You know, I just had to work it out. Thought about trying to start out with some that were like hand done, but then I'm because as I'm learning this G code for the this little CNC thing, are they still coming? Uh, no, Dusty. That's kind of was I, I kind of canceled that. It just wasn't. I said, nah, that's okay. There were there were some people that were I know that they they were going to do it, and I know that they their heart was one hundred percent. I just that's a good drive, and that's a lot of gas money in this day and age. So it was like you know I just I don't know I got no way of paying it back, and they were paying it forward. So I just I'll tend to it, and I. I I pretty much has tended to what I needed to up to this point. I'll figure it out. Morning, Tiger. Figure it out till I can't. You too had the way I suck in you. And... Well, it was, I was got a lot of stuff done at first. It's just, it's the vibe. You know, it's just, that's all. The hell, the chicken coop is how I even got involved with the chicken coop. So it, it can be good. It's just that I think everybody, there's so many people that are kind of, I don't know, stressed out, anxious, whatever. And so it just kind of, that's where they're at. And I just don't, I just choose not to be there. I've been a funk these last few days, but music helps bring me out of it. So I've been listening to a lot. There you go, S to B. That's me. I usually jam out. I'm sure people have been jamming out to all kinds of stuff throughout the woods because I just fired up under the carport and I just been 
doing stuff. Can we land in the yard? Some of us have wings. <laughs> Hey, Beverly. Hey, I just, I don't know. Man, you know, it's one little chip at a time. I just, I, I, I and I don't really know how to address this without all the other shit because this was never the thing without any of the other. Who has the softest? Oh, I would definitely, there you go. Turning guns probably does because turning guns does kitchen knives and stuff and cooking. And so turning hun guns probably has the softest hands as far as males in the chat. Now, females, I don't know, man. That's up to y'all. Y'all do you, boo. Billy's a cook, a chef. Without fail anymore, I always start my day with rice, crispy, snap, crackle, and pop. So that happens when I just sit here and feel like stretching, going, oh, and next thing you know, it's like... <laughs> Hell, matter of fact, I've woke her up. I go to move and shit pops and grind and sh she's even like, oh shit. It's like, I don't know. It's one of them pieces in there. <laughs> Not me, my hands aren't too bad right now, but most of the time we're and right. I kind of have one of each. I have a, a mildly kind of soft hand, and then I have one that's totally looks 20 years older. It's the drawbacks to chemicals and burns and shit. But I think that was a benzene is what it burnt me real bad all over my hand. Oh, look, turning guns was moving tractors yesterday, like three hours on dirt roads. My kidneys hurt. Oh. Uh, kind of sort of man I don't even I got nothing finally made my ricotta cheese yesterday and made homemade and the only thing not from us was the noodles hey there you go tiger hey wizard Get with Wizard. Wizard made noodles one time on one of my streams. There in his kitchen. He made he did the noodles and then put them in his little cutter deal and sat there and made out the noodles. And yeah, rather interesting. That was one of them wild streams back in the day. Hey, morning, Bug Out Adventures. That is very cool. God, my grand will be listening. Hey, I'm sorry, Bug Out Adventures. 
I'm not sure I'll be much of a help, but <laughs> anyone make kraut? I need some homemade sauerkraut. My feet won't get bad this year. Last year, I only put on shoes to go out in public after that and all. Made chili yesterday, put a little chocolate in it. What? Hey, man. If you if you eat it and the food gets consumed, it, it can't be too bad. Somebody likes it. Definitely chocolate and beans would not and chili would not be my uh, my forte, but hey. As long as it gets eaten. Just found out about putting chocolate in chili. See, I, yeah, I'd never heard of that before, but hey. <laughs> this metal had an orange. Pepper chocolate is good medicine. Never heard of no peppered chocolate. I've heard of dark chocolate being good for you. It's called a pedicure. Espanoli. heard of a dash of cinnamon yeah never chocolate though cayenne no cayenne pepper oh so cayenne pepper with chocolate peppered chocolate oof that would be a sweet and spicy so what's purpose oh, what do you say what do you mean the purpose Oh, oh! The the purpose on the chocolate squares was in the chili. Nine days. There you go. Well, hopefully the weather will be good. I made homemade nut. Homemade Nutella. Nutella. Was that grinding up the the nut butter? What do they do? Just take and keep grinding peanuts up until it makes that? Or do you, do they add stuff to then make it the, the pastier style? Very good for you. I'll take that as a supper. Yeah. Well, the, so the, what is it? Honey, honey, cayenne pepper, lemon juice. And coconut oil. I was taking that for a while. And it, it helped. I still got my little measuring cup with a little whisk that I used to mix it up with. Uh, no, it's like on Survivor or something. Three or four times. Along with eight to ten open active wigs. rough. Too rough here. Until it's hazelnut. Oh, so you just grind the hazelnuts until they turn into a paste. Do you take magnesium? I don't take nothing. I used to take one a day a few years ago. I don't, I don't take shit. 
literally. I don't, I don't take nothing. I got no desire to take anything. Except two for brown sugar trout next time. You wouldn't believe what it does, but you don't taste chocolate, but it definitely does something good. Hmm. We got to do chili. Might have to try a little bit of that. Of course, I'm sure the missus going to trip out whenever I say that out loud. Yeah, I read the other day most people are short on magnesium. I need to get some magnesium. No, it works. No, put my sleep in. I only want chocolate and my peanut butter, a.k.a. A Reese's, right? Simply Tony. Reese's peanut butter cups for the win. Hey, morning, Dennis. I take vitamin D and C every day. Would take some ache out of legs. Well, I don't know because this most of my aching comes in on my legs. The the more I move back there, and it's like the more I stir up. I don't know. I guess it's the my spinal cord or some shit going down my ass and down my legs. Thousand mil a day for leg cramps. Why don't you just eat some damn bananas? Yeah, you just like peels. Five hundred in the morning and five hundred in the evening. Why don't you just eat some dang bananas? Nothing wrong with a banana. And I'm sure, you know, I'm not knocking. I just don't do pills. So if it ain't a natural thing for me, I'd just rather not. Turmeric with black pepper. Yeah. In the summer, I'm darker and then some illegals around here. Trying to tell me I'm short on vitamin D. Another script where that's me. Oh yeah, man. When summer comes along, I'll I'll I brown out real quick. Risk on magnesium magnesium oil I bought works great on the legs. I'm not going to try that at night or something, or when I lay down. Oh, potassium, magnesium, it's it's an isium. All I know is nanas are good for you, oranges are good for you. Get you some greens, eat you some mixed greens, eat red meat, mashed taters. And you can take a lot of damage. O vitamin D was, is the common factor with people who suffer the Kuvi problem. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if anybody caught that interview that Tucker did with, I don't know where that guy was from, but he's a scientist, some medical dude. And he was talking about that whole Vax thing and it wasn't, he doesn't think it was a money thing. He thinks it was a, a control mechanism. And it's something about the neurons in the brain and them actually trying to dumb down America. Oh, I hear my little dude out there trying to crow. 
but I just, that was a rather interesting thing. And I thought, you know, that's how this goes. That's why I, I hear shit. I'm going, wait a minute. How did we get there? Where did that come from? You know, the, so much of the, the outlandish shit. And then I, I, now I get it. And it's because man, without certain things, people forget things there. That, that dude just had a very interesting viewpoint. I got to say. I hear that. Man, that little dude's cracking me up. He's trying his damnedest to crow. I believe it. We grew up eating dirt, and that's where we got our mineral. Yeah, man, you'd have mud pies and shit. You drank out the garden hose. You know, we had a well. In your mid 40s, your body processes vitamin D less or slower. Oh, I don't know. I ain't been in my 40s in a, in a minute, Dennis, so I couldn't even tell you what all went down in my 40s. <laughs> I can't have greens because of warfare. I think both on the arm ticket. Hey, morning, Solomon. People with poor diets suffer, i.e. poor people. I guess it depends on what you identify as poor. I mean, if it's a materialistic thing, then yeah, there's there's a whole lot of people in poverty. If it's having a roof over your head, food in your belly, warmth in the cold and cool in the heat, I don't know. I guess it's all perspective. Plus, I will say right now, it's so ironic because do you do you realize that actually what we consider poor people, HUD, EBT, they actually eat better than peop a lot of people that are actually holding down a job because they have government money to go spend on food where working people or disabled people just on a fixed income have to go and pay for that food. I got to think about that the other day. I saw something and I thought, damn, you know, yeah, these the people with all these EBT cards and shit, they don't get no connect on how the everything is because they don't have to earn that money. They just go stick a card in and they can get what they want. So it's a little different intake for people with that shit. I remember my 40s last in my while. Oh, shit, I don't. I could probably remember bits and pieces, you know, little, little historic moments. I'm poor too. I don't feel poor, but I don't earn a lot of money if that's what you're measuring. Right. That's, and I forgot, I heard, was reading something or I was listening to some, I can't remember which, but. Yeah, it's, it's the materialistic things is where we set all this poverty thing with is we, we base, oh, you don't have all that, you must be poor. Oh, you have all that, you must be wealthy. And it's not, it's not about materialistic things. <laughs> Kick off your shoes and get out in the dirt and let Mother Nature recharge you. I always feel good if I can get something done and I see some kind of That's what kind of helps me. I got to see some kind of accomplishment. I got adventures turmeric, ginger, complete B liquid, magnesium, elderberry, zinc, and apple cider vinegar every day. It has made a difference in my nerve damage. Holy crap though, bug out. What a concoction. 
that's like some kind of alchemist shelf there some turmeric ginger complete b liquid some magnesium some elderberry some zinc apple cider vinegar in the beaker it goes no if i'm just picking i'm just picking i'm trying to stop doing that because i don't want anybody to take no offense to nothing i can remember having to hunt to eat you just didn't go out in my right Stuck in my thirties. <laughs> Poor is a technicality. Money doesn't make you rich. Freedom is the only thing of value in our lives. Every day, they're taking more and more. Morning, Michigan. I had them only reset my brain. Apocryphary. That's the word I was looking for, Bug Out Adventures. A little this, a little this, a little this, a little this, shake and stir. Bam. The potion number nine. <laughs> Just take magnesium one week, see the difference. But see, I don't want to take nothing. I mean, if I just, if I, if I can't do it, then I guess I'm not supposed to do it. That's just the way I view things. And, and, you know, I'm totally okay with that. I'm okay with that exit threshold there. I just hope it isn't a long step to drag out. Just, just one and done. I ordered from Vita, Vita cost. What is that, some vitamin thing? How's, his, uh, how's the hand doing, Michigan? Stitches and everything going good and Do two by eleven when it's phone, when it's a family. They're making tinctures and potions. Now that's the basis of modern medicine. Three three times a week because the older shell needs it. All right, Tiger, don't work too hard. Just hard enough. Stitches come out Friday, I think, maybe Monday. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. Right on. Calmag is what I'm taking. Magnesium, calcium, D3, and Vit C. It's pretty good. See, man, I understand all that stuff. I ain't that. I, I mean, it just, yeah, that's cool. If it's working for you, then that's. I'm not responding like in debate. I'm just on my take. Double up on greens and yellow fruits and vegetables does the same. Add fish to diet as well. Well, you know what? Adding some fish to the diet would probably be a good thing to begin with, Bug Out Adventures, because then I, but I, I don't know how feasible that would be, but it would give me a, a thing I could go down to the creek and go fishing. I didn't skip right over you. I just, I mean, do what do you want me to do? Just tell you no. I don't want to take no nothing. I don't like taking pills. I don't like taking medicine. If anything, I would probably try to then do what, like Bug Out saying, and I'll, I'll eat some yellow fruits. Greens, I got no problem. I personally love mixed greens. Spinach greens, turnip greens, collard greens, mustard greens. But, so, 
wasn't skipping over you. I just wasn't, didn't want you making get you mad by saying doesn't matter now. I wanted someone you bullshit with. You wanted someone to bullshit with. What? To take the magnesium for a week? I, okay, see, now I'm lost. I thought you were talking about the, the taking the pills. So I don't know. What's up, Devil Dog Pepper? Eat right. No need to sit my hair with the bodies. Need me my migraine medicine pot is going into full effect. Mark set go to infinity and beyond. <laughs> Pills are such a hassle. I've forgotten my antibiotics just for 10 days. I forgot a couple of times. Oops, just not meant for pills. That's I mean, me neither. It's my motto. Just work hard enough not to get fired. Work smarter, not harder. Oh, okay. I never know, man, you know, because that woman can go off on somebody. So it could have been me because I wasn't agreeing to the pill. So it could have been me. I wasn't sure. She wasn't very specific. It's like a 12 gauge. It just kind of scattered out there. Morning, rabbit. Greens provide lots of iron. Hey, maybe. Yeah, see, I'm all about the greens, man. Everything I take is either ate or drank, no pills. I wish I could take a pill to make me a normal person. But what is normal, Bug Out Adventures? Oh, that's Bushido. Oh, different bug out. What? Damn, that's actually bug out Bushido. I saw the bug out. I thought it was bug out adventures. What's up, Bushido? I wish I could take a pill to make me a normal person. It is lonely being so much better than everyone else. I didn't say you were. I said it was like a, not you are, but like a. Look. Hit the reset button. Beep. All right. We're starting over. So what do you work, Bushido? I want to warn me I had to wear my damn boots this morning. Oh, you're not at work? You want me to do you, you want to sh come up? Man, Battleship Texas. She be looking pretty good. get worn out shit dude if they were gonna get wore out they've done been wore out with my repetitive shit although it's gonna be kind of spaced out nowadays because i just if i'm doing the, the i guess uh just 
normal shit building a chicken coop i could stream while i was doing that but man when i gotta do this physical shit like in that ditch and that's like having to walk down that ditch line beside the house i can't take my chair there so mm. What's up, man? Uh, the same old man. Did you all got rain and wind and shit down there? Yeah, we uh, we got quite a bit of rain last night. We had a kind of a freak storm that popped up. And I kind of slept through most of it, to be honest, but yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, in North Carolina, when we got hit with all that wind, I guess it either started or ended down in Florida. Um, you know, everybody's connected by the weather. It's just a matter of time. You know, I was kind of amused at how we had these really high winds in North Carolina. And uh, then I found out down here it was the same thing while I was gone. Yeah, but see, I think the elevation changes kind of the the push of the wind. Because you get that higher elevation and it's just like, it's there. But somehow when it gets that lower, it's almost like it gets stronger. I don't know. It just feels weird. Now, I don't well, know what happened up there then, but I'm just other experiences being up it's like elevation i don't know if it's because you get farther up in the stream so it's it's bad but not as bad well you also got stuff like um you know look at kansas for example those flat states you know picks up where momentum. say what picks up momentum oh yeah i thought you said wait a minute i was like okay but uh no it's like you get a little uh, you know, what do they call it? Mandela effect. You get a little breeze on one side of the state and by the time it makes it to the other, it's a tornado, you know? Right. Um, I do think that a varying elevation and trees for that matter. I mean, trees slow down and catch a lot of wind too. That's where a uh, man in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, I even got caught in one in Kuwait. Um, a couple places out there, I got hit with those crazy sandstorms like in the mummy you know oh yeah and dude that it's just like the movie i mean it without the skull popping out of the clouds of course but like it is a wall of sand that comes at you and you're like how does this happen but then I, you look around and you're like there's there's no terrain to prevent this from happening so like you know i mean it makes all the sense in the world but well, and it, and it just picks up. I was listening to actually, it's weird because you said that because I was listening to a guy and he was talking about deployed over there and he was in uh, one of the the observation spots. And he said they were talking and just kind of, you know, nothing was really going down. And he just all of a sudden they could hear it and he looked over and he said, man, it was just coming. He said, I didn't have time to roll my sleeves down or nothing. And he said it was it was like a sandblaster. He said, "Man, my arms were kind of all ate up and shit." Yeah, and glasses don't work, you know. Um, man, I I got lost. It's kind of funny. I was in the LSA, meaning like the area where uh people were living, you know. Um, they they kind of cordon them off in one space which uh makes very little sense when you start thinking about rocket attacks which happen all the time it's like let's put everyone in the same spot i always thought that was dumb but whatever <laughs> um like i had uh i had left uh i was working at like a vehicle ecp <clears throat> and i caught a ride back to the lsa and it dropped me off but as right as i got out of this little Haji bus that gave me a ride. I, I turned around and looked and I saw it coming and I was like, Oh shit. And I started running towards where my place was, which was in the back corner. 
and I was looking over my shoulder and I was like, I'm not going to make it, you know, and I made it about halfway back and it hit and, uh, it was so bad. You couldn't, you can't really open your eyes and it's even hard to breathe. So you got to wrap shit around your face, you know, or else you're just breathing in sand, you know? And, um, for a limited time anyway. Oh yeah. But it's, it's a couple minutes when it hits, if it's a big one, you know, I mean, and, you only uh, have a couple of minutes of breathing that shit in before you ain't breathing so much anymore. And I, I was, you know, you got to feel around with your hands because you, you know, the glasses, it, you're wearing glasses, but the sand will get in between the glasses and your face, hit the glass and bounce back into your eye. So if you're, when the wind blows a certain direction, having the glasses is even worse than not having them, you know? And, uh, so like you, you don't even bother opening your eyes. You get caught in one or two of those and you learn like, yeah, if you, the second you open your eyes, you're just making a, a sand cookie out of your eyeball, you know, like it's just no fun. So I felt around, I found a door, I opened it and I went in and I closed it and there was like six or seven complete strangers in that room. And I just looked at them and I was like, well, here I am. I'm not leaving. And they were like, no, it's cool, man. You know, uh, <laughs> just sat there for a few minutes until it ended. And then I, I opened the door, said, thanks, man. And I left, you know, <laughs> it's like, I have, no, and dude, afterwards I tried to find those people. I couldn't even tell you where that, that room was, you know, because like in the sand and everything, it's just like, it, you know, it's like turn all the lights off in your house and then try to remember exactly where your can opener is. You know, it, you just can't do it, you know? <laughs> right. So anyway. I bet that was, a, that'd be a nerve wracking kind of, well, I guess depending on the timing of the event. Happen to go down at the wrong time. You don't want to end up in the wrong room. Yeah, it's, I mean. You know, I like when I was in uh, Kuwait and we got hit with a sandstorm, that was back in the old days. That was before the bases were up there, you know, and uh, every when you went there, you had to live in tents and stuff. And that one wasn't so bad because I was in the tent and we just like we just tied everything up and <clears throat> I was worried the tent was going to get blown away. But it those GPs, they were staked down pretty good. So the tent held and that wasn't so bad it just loud noises and shit and we had a couple rolls of duct tape that we uh started putting all over everything any any crack or split or weak spot or whatever you know like we were just in there like if sand was blowing through a pinhole we'd cover it with duct tape you know <laughs> and, uh, it's like water it'll find a way mm -hmm. yeah you have no idea how many if you want to find out if you got any holes in your tent just put it in a sandstorm and you will figure out immediately it's like a sandblaster shooting through that hole you know if you walk by it it's actually almost painful <clears throat> but yeah that one wasn't so bad that that one in Helmand was the worst and uh we were on the border of iraq um i think going through the jordan side um we got hit with one and i was in a humvee of all things and humvees are not uh if you're trying to seal yourself from the environment like a humvee is a very poor choice you know right. i had a i had a, a soft skin it was a, a radio vehicle so it it wasn't even a hardback it it had like the you know the canvas top and all that stuff and dude it it was it was Catch a joke all. my doors were screwed up because uh from the ops before that because when you're on a mew like you'll go to like in six months you'll go to 10 countries you know i mean boom 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 you go there you put the fire out you go here you put the fire out you go here you put the fire out you know what i mean and we would land by hovercraft those big lcac uh mm. hovercrafts and the boy i was in like the first stick because <clears throat> you know they're like we got to get the the a team out first right well they want my Mark 138 vehicle because it's got a big HF radio that can talk to the ship. So they want to get me, they put me with people that are going to go far out. And then we use the vehicle to, to shoot comms back to the ship. Right. Well, that means I go first pretty much. Right. For those particular kind of missions. I you know, you do, you learn how to do a few things and you do a couple different jobs, you know, like there's retrans, there's that, there's blah, blah, blah. But anyway, this was kind of more of an air job, right. Kind of like a tack P thing. 
And uh, from the two or three countries before that, the hovercraft, a big, powerful airboat motor in the back started sucking the doors off of my Humvee and I'd have to unbend them because it would literally crumple them like a paper wad and it would be <laughs> stuck in the grate of the, of the, those big fans. So I'm using my knee and my foot and like having people help me and I'm bending the door back into what should be the original shape and putting it on the vehicle. But you know, it's not shaped right. There's an inch and a half a gap up at the top and it's like rubbing too hard at the bottom and stuff. And man, you throw in a sandstorm and it's like, here we go. You know, <laughs> I, was, I was sweeping sand out of that vehicle for probably three months afterwards. I, any, anytime I'd move something, there'd just be a puddle of sand in there, you know, I can only imagine, especially over there. Oh, my CD collection got ruined. I remember that. That was back. Remember CDs, those like records, but they're shiny, you know, That's those solar panel things that are around, aren't they? Yeah. 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 It's those. I had a, <laughs> I had a zipper case with the little plastic sleeves. Remember how everybody had those CD oh, yeah. cases, the Hell sand, yeah. <clears throat> this will tell you about a sandstorm, dude. The sand shot through the zipper got into the pockets and scratched all of my CDs. That's, that's what a sandstorm does. I can believe it. I can believe it. Cause it'd be no, like no. water. I mean, it just, it's, it, it finds that grain dude. Somehow those <laughs> grains can find. Mm -hmm. And here's another funny story attached to that. So the rest of the time that we're on this, this deployment, the CDs got killed. Right. So, you know, being a shit hit the fan, uh, always think on your feet survivalist type, right? I'm like, okay, we've just lost our CD capability. So we score a, uh, a Sony Walkman cassette player from somebody Damn. and we wire it into our vehicle. So it'll play through the loudspeaker. Okay. But we could only find three cassette tapes. That was it. You know, cause nobody, everyone was getting rid of all that shit. Nobody had that, you know, and the cassette tapes that we found was a Bob Marley greatest hits, a, uh, surf tune, uh, endless summer Two soundtrack by the sandals with like beach surf music and then garbage, the band with the chick singer, you know, <laughs> and the dude to this day, I'm like, I, I cannot listen to any of those three. Uh, you got flashbacks. Well, it's just we burned it out so bad. Imagine listening to the same three cassette tapes like for for constantly for months, you know. Morning, Greta. So yeah. And yeah. that's all because of a sandstorm. The reason why I hate the band garbage is because of a sandstorm. So garbage is garbage because of a sandstorm. <laughs> yeah. And dude, it ruined Bob Marley for me. That's I that's just you know, I loved Bob Marley before that. Hated him afterwards. Damn. So poor old Bob Marley over it. So well, we got John Fogarty going through the jungle in Vietnam. So now we got Bob Marley hitting the dunes over in Kuwait. And oh, shit. But, you know, surf music, uh, that was like the border of Iraq and Jordan, if I remember right. But uh, the surf music was oddly fitting for that. You know, like you're kind that, of, yeah. it, it, you know, you're just driving around, you know, burning diesel and like, you know, those, those guitar and, and drum California surf sort of like, you know, the, how those songs, they never really get to a point and they're always longer than they should be. And there's like the bongo drums all the time in them and shit, you know, um, it, I don't know. It's just like when you're pointlessly driving around a, pointless music that goes nowhere just seems to fit it you know so that was one observation that i did have yeah just one yeah hey stp hold on just a minute sir That was rather sudden. I, I didn't even realize he walked away. I thought he was going to say no, something. I'm right, I'm right here. I just turned around. You just couldn't see me on the screen. 
I just turned around to get something. STP said, uh, I remember eight tracks or I said, I'm old. I remember eight tracks. So I thought, Hey, wait, I still got that from when way back when me and Virginia were talking about that. So here you go. STP. You mean like these things right here? The good old eight tracks. Like, look, there's even the kiss, the ace freely eight track. Um, th we should bring this up here, man, because, um, this this is something and i you know i don't need to talk they, this crowd tends to be a little older so i i'm kind of flogging a dead horse here but i uh i i'm in like forums and and chat rooms and stuff that tend to have younger people in them you know and uh when i tell them like what you need to do is you need to go to like a flea market and find a television that has a dvd and vcr slot already in it like when they were making those tvs that you put in a kid's bedroom or whatever like get one of those if you can find an a track player get it if you can find a cassette player get it you know like because they're selling them for nothing you know at, at junk stores and stuff but it's like when if or when this high-tech stuff gets wiped out which you know there is a pretty good chance that that's going to be a part of the package of what happens if they ever decide to like you, you know well look at this whole uh solar eclipse thing they're saying all the electronics are going to burn out you know those eight tracks are going to be working they're going to be working just fine and um cassettes and dvds and all that shit it's like you can't have a solar flare that wipes out what's on a dvd unless it's like 3400 degrees you know so uh, you know, if you're going to survive it, your DVD is going to survive it. So that's something we need to think about because, dude, boredom is really the enemy when it comes to this kind of stuff. And, and I mean, if there's one thing I've learned from de being deployed a lot, boredom is what gets you more than anything. And because you sit there and if people have jobs where they uh, where they're at the point of doing their job where they don't have to think about doing the job anymore then they'll know what I'm talking about because you get stuck at work for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, however long you work in a day and you're mindlessly executing your tasks and your brain just starts getting stuck on something and you start thinking about something. And if you think about where your brain can take you, like you'll get mad over shit that you shouldn't get mad about, or you'll suddenly say like, I need to buy a motorcycle. And then the next four days, you just talk yourself into it in your mind without even trying, you know, or whatever. I mean, like it almost sounded like you described a midlife crisis or something. Yeah. But boredom will make you have a midlife crisis every day. You know, Let like, me ask you this though. Do you think it's really going to be the same? Like, cause I mean, I totally get what you're saying as far as boredom. I mean, hell I, I've kind of ran into that in solitary. You can get bored and uh, yeah, exactly. But, do you think it'll be like that if like an EMP shit went down like the, cause you have the reaction to the event. So are you actually going to be able to like become so chilled that you're so bored of just kind of sitting while the, well, rest, you know, now that you know that this event is what caused things to go down this thing or can you really get bored? Any event. Of, of any severity is a year long. Okay. So an EMP, which takes four minutes, boom, it's over. Right. But and things are million gonna, people, a hundred million people pass away. So you now have all the survivors of well, those do they? Million people. Well, I mean, we really, we really don't our know. Own government even estimates more than that. We have no idea though what's going to well, happen in a way though. See, I think they kind of are onto something because they know all the Medicare, Medicaid people and shit. They know people that are, you know, they have hospital reports. How many people are on dialysis? I mean, cause all that shit stops. So all the people in all the ICUs and any critical cares, all that shit's going to just up and stop. And that's going to, to me, if when I visualize that, I can see that causing ma major, major panic in major cities. It won't be just the fact that the electric isn't out. It's the fact of all the people that are going to be just. Mm -hmm. and, and the reaction to that of like, wait, shit. And it's like, yeah, dude, you're watching it just drop 
because you can't get that started. There is no defibber. That you just ba ba boom. I mean, and you think yeah. about that emotional wave that comes after that. I don't know. Well, that's the part that I'm talking about here, okay? Because yeah, you you're going to be running around like your hair's on fire for let's call it a week or two or three. But at the end of like two or three weeks, you've either found somewhere to go and found a way to make it or you didn't, right? And now from that point on, it's like what do we do? You're like, "Oh, hey, let's try to get some animals. Let's or let's focus on the animals that we have and let's plant some more stuff. Let's get this garden going. Let's do the, these are all things that like you do it and then you go, okay, now what? It, well, now let's watch the stuff and see if it grows or not. You know, um, it's not, I, see, I don't know, man. I, I, I think that's a pretty, uh, that's a short time frame. It just seems to me, I, I somehow seem Cause dude, just look at the people reactions over Facebook, just being down. That was it. Everything else was just fine. There was just that particular app that didn't work for what, like six or eight hours and, and yeah. people were tripping and shit. And it's like, well, people are going to lose their mind, but, but look at how fast they, they get back to a sense of normalcy for, you know? So what I'm, what I'm saying is it's going to be like the purge. But then after that, once that's over, it's, it's going to be sitting around, scratching your ass, wondering what to do next. There's going to be security. There's going to be people growing stuff. There's going to be people swinging hammers and turning screws and, you know, all that other stuff. But it's, it's not going to be exciting, you know? Like, it'll get exciting if, like, you know, you get some marauders that come and try to steal from you and, you know, for a minute there, you get a little reprieve from the boredom. You replace boredom with terror or you replace boredom with extreme violence. And then it's back to normal again, or maybe somebody's coming by and you trade with some people and that's kind of exciting. But like, for the most part, you're going to be more into like a pioneer lifestyle than anything. You're just going to be dealing with isolation and loneliness. Well, man, so I, I would have a movie night here. Well, that's what I'm saying. After the smoke clears from the event, you're, there's going to be a long period where you're just waiting, you know, yep. waiting for society to catch up, you know, pretty much. Well, I don't know, though, because, you know, I guess it depends. Um, I, it can go either way because kind of get back to like frontier days, you know, as you're coming into the unknown, because that's what it'll be. It'll be the unknown. You know, because I, I still think that it's because you can look at a movie or little clips, but you, if you look at the emotional response, because it's like that, okay, here's this, people dying, you go through all this emotional tending in the millions, and then, but you still have all these kids of all these ages from newborns all the way up, you know, to 18, but it's just zero to 18, and so as these events are taking place over these months up to a year, uh, you yes. still have the whole youth and you know the kids right. into that. That's why, that's why you're that's why you're gonna need the entire SpongeBob collection on DVD. That's you're making my point for me. No, we we need to get away from the whole SpongeBob episodes and anything you don't want to expose your younger generation to all that forms of entertainment. You want to get them back out in the woods and whittling and making fishing poles out of limbs and get them out there hunting for food. See, that's why I don't think you're going to be so bored. You could be bored if you just want to perpetuate the whole metropolitan city lifestyle. But if you wanted to pull your, take this golden opportunity to pull your head out of the ass and join a real environment, then that's when you got your kids out there snaring rabbits and, trapping squirrels, you know, instead of being, oh, by the way, let me fire up the solar panel and y'all can just sit right there and stare at this little TV for the next six hours because it'll run it for six hours. No, no, no. See, I see what you're trying to do already. You're trying to plant the seed. What's up, Cherokee? I don't know, man. And a shot at, you need a, a time and a place where you can kind of shoot for normalcy 
uh, whether it's constructive or not, I mean, normal is a good target, at least for part of your day to kind of be able to take all that shit off, meaning not just the stuff, but the stuff off your brain and just kind of tune out for a minute, you know? Well, no, and I get it. It I I wasn't totally countering that, but I do think I would, because I'm telling you, man, I'm just, I don't know. I'll just, you, you go to some of these events and you watch the way families respond to losing the whole house, to losing maybe a family member in the house or the car or, and I just kind of sat and I was listening to, I don't know if that was a damn Glenn Beck thing, but somebody spit out the whole government's. Cause apparently we have a damn, uh, a committee or some shit that this is what they do is to estimate, you know, the losses and the reaction or something. So, uh, and they estimated like 190 million people would pass if their an EMP took out the grids, the three major grid things, which Texas is its own power. And then there's, you got the West coast and East coast. So, but they so were talking, they mean, I'm thinking, so wait a minute, 190 some guys. Like, Damn. Dude, do they dude. mean that? globally or do they mean that like nationally. just in this country just u.s nationally 190 people in this country going out of what we're probably at 360 million now that we yeah. let another 30 in without documenting it you know well actually the latest number i heard on that yesterday was 45 million so that's uh that's you know we're talking i don't know what half probably i mean well see and then you think of i mean and that's what i was saying i've just i i I take that and then i thought damn man i mean i've i've been on some scenes and you just watch the breakdown of just one family member and it's like so this is gonna be like those little firecracker strands you just throw down on the road that just go off because when you think about that, going from all these metropolitan cities, dude, across the country, and it'll be that emotional reaction, you know, it's going to be, because it's you're already going to have the panic and fear of WTF, what just happened, oh my God, and then you'll have different people that are going to be like, that's it, we're under attack. And so you're going to have all that emotional anxiety response, but then you're going to actually have the reality of the newborn that was in that premature crib that's there's no electricity no more to that grandparent that's laying in that bed on the whole breathing apparatus being kept there. And so all of a sudden the emotional response from that, all that loss, I don't know, dude, that's, that kind of just tripped me out. I don't know if I think that was yesterday might've been earlier this morning. I was just sitting there and I was thinking, damn dude, can you imagine the emotional response of just that particular event right there? Just the loss. Just you take any any accident you've seen, any loss of life, you know, watch that emotional response and then multiply that by the half that's still alive. Or actually yeah, not even half, it's a quarter. Sounds like a good time for a six pack and and a couple movies. You know, I mean, like, in the he, he, dude, I, I don't know, like what I've seen from negative shit and, and you were talking about solitary, you know, you can't be present the whole time when you're in a environment, like, let's say a solitary environment, you have to open up a little portal and take your mind somewhere else and find be somewhere happy. else, you know, yep. find your happy place. And, uh, if you well, can't find a happy place, you can at least do a half measure and, and distract yourself, you know? And, uh, I don't know, man, it's worked wonders for me. And I, I'll tell you, man, I know a lot of people that <laughs> I know a lot of people that, that ate bullets, you know, and, and a lot of them, they were, uh, you, you know, better than me, if you know what I'm saying. Um, the, the ones that you looked at, the ones you relied on, the ones that you considered strong, like a lot of the guys that can't take it are those guys, you know, yeah. and it's because they match force with force. They match an environment with themselves. They, they, 
they make the cut, you know, but it's, it's going to be bigger than what you can handle. It's going to be bigger than what you can handle. You just know that, you know, and, yeah. and then it's like, you, yeah. you know, this is kind of, I guess where I come in because, you know, when I was a kid, I was, my brother and I, we were the two white kids in a black neighborhood, you know? you can't fight that. You can't, you know, like you're just like, we're going to have to eat some shit every now and then it's just going to happen. You know what I mean? And, uh, and it did, it happened all the time and you have to learn <clears throat> how to deal with losses and you have to learn how to pass time and you got to learn how to do that kind of shit. And I, I just bring that up as an example. I'm not trying to make some kind of point or anything, but like, what I mean is it's not always going to go your way. And the people that like, that are like very, uh, um, proactive about shaping their environment. The people that are talented and good at it are the ones that also have a harder time dealing with it, not being favorable, you know, um, coping like me, man, <clears throat> I would get rattled, you know, uh, really get, get shook up, man, three beers and a hotel in Dubai. and by the time I get home, I'm almost normal. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, I guess you're never like the same, but like I could get rid of the bulk of, of all that. Just, I, I put my, um, I don't know, man. It's like, I, you lower your standards and your expectations pretty much, you know? And like, we make fun of, and we condemn all this programming and all these movies and all this other bullshit, because it's like, it turns your brain in the jelly, but sometimes turning your brain in the jelly is exactly what you need. And if you think about it today, if people realized and looked at their lives and realized how meaningless their life is like, they'd be eating bullets too. You know, like if you're a middle manager at a, you know, place pushing paper and you woke up and said, the dollar is going to collapse. I have a meaningless job. Like, and, and this has happened to me, dude, I had a harder time dealing with reality at home than I did over there. Cause over there, I was like, this is real. You know, like if I screw up, people die, you know, but when I'm sitting in some job and it's like, well, if I complete my tasks on time, then I, then I use a push broom and clean the shop. And it's like, why am I here? Why am I on this planet? You know, that was the shit that bothered me, you know, but, uh, man, there's millions of people right now that are using the super bowl and, and America's got talent to deal with the fact that they have lives that are not rewarding, you know? So right. we're already doing it, man. And if you think life is suddenly going to become way more rewarding, the second a bad thing happens, well, it's, it's really not going to look that way. You know, it's, uh, it'll get better eventually, but in the beginning, it's going to be worse. It's going to get worse before it gets worse. You know? Yep. I, I guess that's I my so. point. I'm going to share these links real quick. So did that here, make sense, by the way? I was kind yeah. of rattling off. No, it did. That's the EMP task force. And then this one here, I thought, I haven't fully finished reading all the way through this PDF, but uh, this PDF is, it's our own damn government, and it's the grid down death of a nation. The, psych, the physiology and the, the psychology and physiology of human desperation, starvation, and living without rule of law throughout a prolonged grid down scenario. And it's literally a product of the task force on national and homeland security. And here I'll bring it actually up on screen. They've never been wrong before, so we can trust that. No, it's not so much that they're right or wrong as it in this, this is what they're thinking. You know, so this is this is their. Uh, no, I want the whole screen anyway. Y'all can actually see. There's the web address. So this is actually this is. It let this is our own government, and here's the the main. I think yeah, here's the main web address, right here for. Welcome to the EMP Task Force on National and Homeland Security. So, I mean, if you kind of wanted, this is, they're going to show you where the tower are. They're going to show you 
they, they, they openly talk about shit in a way, you know, of course they're not going to tell you, Oh, by the way, we're allowing this and this and this, but this is them thinking out loud is the way I take it. And this was put into play in 2021. I do believe it was. Well, you know, any one of these last presidents, you know, the last, let's say four or five that we elected, any one of them could have not put money into bullshit and uh, reinforced our infrastructure to make us more resistant to an EMP, but they all chose to launder money. So um, consider that when you read this, you know, like they're saying, here's what you can do, but they're not talking about what they could have done, which is, you know, fix it pretty much. Hey, kiss off. Yeah. Oh, actually, and hopefully I don't get in no trouble, I guess. I don't know. It's whatever. I mean, you know, fucking feed me three squares a day. I don't give a shit. I just scrolled down and saw a statement of fair use. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I scrolled on down to go, this report can be downloaded in PDF format for free, but it ain't at the U.S. site. It's at the griddownconsulting.com. Please share and disseminate as widely as possible. The American people need to know and understand what's coming if our government fails to act and harden the U.S. electric grid. That's what I'm talking about. If we were really worried about this, we would have fixed it instead of launder money in Ukraine, for example. You know? Oh, they're fixing to do that whenever they come back from this little break they're on right now. Apparently, they're fixing to send like $63 billion back over there. And... Um, it's, we've proven that money is hopeless over there. Um, not only does it not go where it's supposed to go, but it's, it's not making a difference. And these Ukrainian people are actually suffering more because we're encouraging them to resist in a losing battle. You know, no, what do you mean? Encouraging them to resist Hell, We've made it impossible for him to fucking come to peace. We literally pit, got old Boris dipshit hairdo dude to go over there and pretty much go, look, no, no, no peace agreements. And then what it didn't is Zelensky come out and pass some national law over there about cannot come to peace agreement. So it's like you, they doomed that damn country to an, an infinity war. Well, does anybody think that Zelensky um, is not a puppet of the United States? Is there anybody that doesn't know that, first of all? Because a little piano wanger dinger dude dancing on stages wasn't actually put in there by the Obama administration. Because yeah, I, I mean that's like where we did a coup in 2014 or some shit and actually flipped somebody else's government around. It's not like we've ever done that before. Because that's that's where we got to start. You know, <laughs> like we have to begin the we have to begin the exercise with looking and knowing that. Um, this is some bullshit, right? Um, and and that's it's fine, you know. Um, I mean, I, I'm saying it's fine. Do I mean it is 100% satisfactory? No, not really. But what I'm saying is that um, we've it's not the first time we've put public di uh, dictators into countries, you know. Right. But. The, the difference between this one and ones in the past is I really do think that this was somewhat of a rogue action, meaning uh, not our government per se, but members of our government looking for uh, inside stock tips, pretty much. They, I think that there was a rogue weaponized um, faction of the government that interfered with this country's leadership yeah, for I think some the of advancement our, of crime you know some, yeah some of our past stuff i think was political i think this was more war machine deep state side of things because dude this was inst instigating with a nuclear power this wasn't let's go over to iran or let's go and let's just let's cause some shit over mexico no 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 Let's go provoke the, the shit right there with the nuclear power. You know, the next biggest boy on the block. Let's go do that. And mm, that I don't I don't think they did that. Um, I think they did it to set up companies 
and to make drug deals, quote unquote drug deals, you know, to make deals uh, to to advance profit. And I think Russia pulled their card and invaded them. Well, see that. Well, I don't think they intended to fight Russia. I think they intended. So you think that it like started off on the political side and then basically they got played by the deep mm -hmm. state side. So now it's been initiated. Think um, money laundering, human trafficking, uh, all that stuff. Is, Is it a coincidence that we. And I'm still listening, so I'm just going to mute for a second, but I'm listening. It, is it a coincidence that we just happen to infiltrate and exploit a country that was like the number two human trafficking spot in the world almost, you know? Um, I don't know. Let's ask P. Diddy about that one, right? Because, you know, it, as it turns out, it looks like we idolize and fail forward every every sexual offender and and trafficker that we can find we'd turn them into multi-millionaire movie stars and music icons you know our uh our elites in uh, in this country they've got a problem you know they're not effing normal per se if you want to use that word and this is a symptom because you look at all the politicians that have family members and they're making money in this country and no one has given us an excuse of why we're defending this place. You know, we, we're not responsible for them by any treaty or pact or anything, but we're defending them. Why, you know, why, why are we bothering with this? We would have been better off. Are you uh, yeah. Well, we're doing that. Oh, well, because their latest pitches, I mean, we're trying to prevent the big bad communist Russian bear from just storming across Europe. You so know? why didn't we build Poland this whole time? Well, you know? because that's really all bullshit. And it's called, you know, we wanted to pick a fight so we can funnel as much money because that dude's done been in office and we've done fuck with him for the last four years. He's fired people up. He potentially could come back. I suggest we get what we can get out of this. So next, everything goes to Ukraine. And they're going to continue to do this till November. Everything will go to Ukraine. It don't make a shit, dude. It's like, look at this. I mean, we're the number one human trafficker. We're doing it right now every day, every minute of every day by the thousands in our border. Well, so the Democrats sh- had it right. Shocked that we're funneling money into the second largest human trafficking place because we're the first one. Good morning, Michelle. Well, um, it depends on what time frame, because I'll tell you, um, as far as victims go, uh, Ukraine and Czech Republic, hands down, um, that's who gets, that's, that's who they're preying on. Okay. But the consumers, Germany has given us a really good run for the money. And there's some years, um, that they beat us. So we don't have the title. We got to up those numbers a little bit, you know, just a wee bit morning everybody that's here good morning good day good afternoon good evening in case i've missed you excuse me so yeah if we want to uh we want to hold on to that crown as the the world's most elite consumers of of like human trafficking and money laundering like we got to get Germany out of the picture somehow. Those pesky Germans. And have you ever thought about this, man? Um, this is a little abstract, but uh, abstract, I guess, is kind of what I do. Um, here we are. What we talk about behind closed doors, at least me and the people I've met up with in this YouTube prepper community, we get behind closed doors and we talk about cows and goats and rabbits and like, you know, blueberry bushes. And like, we talk about like tanning leather and shit, you know, like 
we talk about that kind of stuff and these elites that are trying to wage a war with us, they're talking about P Diddy human trafficking and money laundering in other countries and toppling governments. It's like, how are we the bad guys here? Like, have you ever thought about that? Like how in the F and F are we the people that need to be watched and surveilled constantly under NSA? Like somebody, please help me out with that. You flip the moral compass of that NSA. That NSA isn't to keep us safe, it's to watch us. So it became an observation instead of a preventativeness. So, and then we, when you allow people, it's just kind of like no different than if you had to let like damn Al Capone become the fucking secretary of finance for, you know, the United States, I, I don't think that or, the main objective has been to make us money. Well, see, you've got crooks in there that have no intention of the constitution. That's why the Hugo constitution and they look at you and just kind of go, yeah, okay. You know, you say Supreme court says you're, it's, you can't do this. It's unconstitutional. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So I or mean, instead of uh, Al Capone would, do you mean something, something crazy that would never happen? Like um, making a Monsanto employee, the agriculture czar in the United States, you, something crazy okay. like that. Right. No, I'm talking. Oh, wait, see, Obama did that. Stuff. You're talking about the, the, uh, obscured stuff that's happened that people really didn't notice it happening at the time i'm talking about because that's you've got crooks that are literally all about breaking the law and they're actually getting to dictate the upper management of what would be considered law enforcement so how, how well do you think that gets enforced when the criminals are the ones actually getting to decide what's legal and not now yeah man and you either change that. I mean, this is my just, I'm, I mean, just a quick two. It's, it's the voting. It starts with voting. And if that doesn't work in November, then it is what it is. But that's to me, the next formatted step to take, I, th I would think as the forefathers would have saw it. And then depending on how far that gets pushed, unless something were to go off before, because I get it all the, the anti-voting people want to, we'll talk about shit hitting the fan right now. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, we keep doing this until November. It's to show up and vote and shit were to not be what it's supposed to be. Well, then that's going to cause for a different reaction than last time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know, dude. It's, uh, that part, um, just, screams of hopelessness to me you know what i mean screams what it's just screams hopelessness to me no. like we're, we're dealing with that is uh i don't, I don't want to say pointless but it's too big for at our level i mean we really would be better off and better suited to make plans on when these people burn themselves out because they can't sustain themselves at this level of corruption so let's uh let's focus on when they're gone. What do we do? You know? How do how do we make sure this never happens again or whatever? You know what I mean? Yeah, well I see I don't know if you will when you kind of look back at when all the different oh how's it what'd be a more righteous way to say this? So I'll just say viewpoints. We'll call it viewpoints, you know, people's when all these different viewpoints arrived down here on the frontier, it, it was a uh, different people had different ways of doing things. So w what some people thought was very brash and or ugly or terrorizing. Other people were like tough shit. So until we kind of had some kind of uniform thing, shit was kind of all, I mean, Indian tribes did what each one they wanted to and groups of people did whatever they wanted to do. And so I don't know. We'll just, we'll see. Cause I'm just looking at the quality of people nowadays. And it's like, yeah, I'm not sure, but it's, I mean, Hey, dude, I've been locked up with a few thousand people that were, were all, were not exactly the best quality of society members. So I, I get how crazy it can get. I'm just, I'm not sure that other people really are. I don't think they, I think living rooms and TVs paint one picture 
I think concentrating wire and, and cinder block walls would know their options. Just happens to throw a different viewpoint. Maybe that's just why I'm just I'm a little different. Just well, a little different, but I'm okay with it. Well, I mean, I, I guess what I'm getting at is like the the permanence of the permanence and sustainability. These people talk about sustainability all the time, but what's not sustainable is the way they're doing things. You know, right. they're not going to get away with that shit forever. In fact, like they're pretty much getting their card pulled right now as we speak. You know, and uh. Well, I've kind of thought about that overall. When you look at the overall, it's kind of like when you look at the shape of, I don't know, let's look at the shape of Europe. You know, let's look at the shape of Poland and these places and go, okay, so what? Without the U.S. being here, what, y'all think y'all are going to be rocking it a whole lot better or some shit? And then once you bring this one down, then what do you think's left? And that's, I've actually kind of sat here and gone, damn, repeat, can you get so rich that you become so stupid that you don't even realize that you're actually doing yourself in? Yeah, but I mean, what they're fighting is the alternative. Um, they're fighting, look at uh, Gaddafi, look at Saddam Hussein, now look at all these BRICS nations that are going to introduce an alternate currency. They're stopping the opposition. They're stopping... Um, Mm, trying to figure out how to say this, but it, they're catching and nipping in the bud and killing in the womb any opposition to their petrodollar. You know, that's what these wars are. They don't just profit from them by selling defense and defense related stuff and running defects and all that shit, but they also profit by, by stopping the competition in its infancy, you know? And Russia is part and parcel um, the the spearhead for making a an alternative alternative sorry alternative uh, currency. And is it any strange coincidence that we want to fight them and we don't want to stop? It, it crazy, isn't it? It's wild. Well, yeah. I just don't, I, they really think that something viable is going to come out of this. And that's what really cracks me up in a way, because it's kind of like AI, dude. AI, you know, sometimes I think the threat of AI is because it just, it, it fucking does what people should be doing without fucking all their emotion and shit. Like, hey, you need to just bend that fucking metal and put it on right there. But people are like, nah, and I'm really tired. The only didn't give me no Nikki last night. Lunch really sucked. And everybody's busy bitching where this robot does it without it. But they can't make conscious decisions. It can't use that human life to, to thing. And that's what, and that's the same thing. But these people act like you're, they're going to come down to something where it's like, there, we've got these these patriots, these deplorables, these people that believe in this whole constitution, this America shit. And we finally have dealt with them. And when they look around, it's like, you're now sitting a pile of top of garbage. What'd you get? You literally killed the, the very backbone of the, the kind of people that have brought the world, all this cool little technology shit. You know, that's the way I view it. It's because that's the drive, dude. It's like when you look, that's we used to invent so much shit, dude. People always thought outside the box. They thought of ways. We invented things. Well, you still got a few that are still trying to do that. Well, it used to be, you know, and this was in our lifetime. It used to be that when an immigrant came from a country, like, for example, Pakistan, you know, um, for us to sign off on the paperwork, it wasn't like, oh, you have no skills. Oh, you follow Sharia law. Oh, you, you're not willing in, uh, to absorb our culture. Okay, stay home. But the next guy goes, I'm a brain surgeon in India. Uh, I, I already know English. I, you know, like I'm, I'm, I would be uh, a stellar addition to your country. And like when we were leading the pack in America, a lot of our driving forces were from these other countries. You know, that's the part that we kind of forget, you know? Well, but, I uh, think yeah, I get where you're at and I agree with that, but I think it right before that, I think it was us. 
because we 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 were immigrants. We've always been immigrants coming in at some form or another. We've just ended up with a good populace that have all been born and we have generations deep here, but people have always come, but we stopped doing it. And then, but the people from outside us still went, Hey, that's America. Oh, you, I can go to college. Yep. And I can learn. Okay. I will do it. And cause they came, they literally were like our forefathers that came from nothing that had that drive to build and dig in and do this. Well, that's, that's the difference people from those countries come over and they see that and they go, well, this is the message now is no, come on over. We're just going to give you some cards phone before you even get here. That's what I'm talking about. This is the difference right there. Like people showed up on a boat with like the money in their pocket and a bag with a Bible and some other crap. And they said, time to make a life. And they started knocking trees and building houses. Right. Um, that was that was a dicey game at that time you know people with nothing to lose came over here and they formed a life some some made it and some didn't and then here we are what i'm talking about is now to decide to become an american is way less of a gamble because you're like oh it's it's a first world nation it's one of the leading countries and oh, yeah. damn near everything you know yeah, yeah. somebody goes i want to be an american it's a different feeling now before it was like religious people that were in england the number one country at the time they said you know what they're not going to let us uh, practice our religion f this we're going to leave and go make a community in those woods over there in america and people were like are you high like are you stupid like there's nothing there there's no convenience stores there's no there's no walmart there's no nothing and they said you know what give it time and we'll build all those walmarts and we'll turn this place into the same shit that we left just give it time you know no that's not what they said that's just what they did but uh that was that was the risk there's no risk now if you're from a shithole country you come to america you get free shit and we're not getting those innovators. We're not getting those people that are putting their balls on the table and like taking the risk and, and feast or famine, they're going to make it, you know, we're getting people that are like, can, can I get something for free? Like, is there a complimentary uh, apartment I can get here? And well, it's see, kind of funny was, because that, that was the overall message that we even did that to our own published pop public. We have um, the hood, we got the EBT program, you know, all this assistant shit. So we pretty much told our own populace, Hey, you know what? You don't actually have to work hard. You don't have to try hard. You know, if it's too tough on you, just go down to the office down the block down there. So we kind of told our own people to do the same shit, just like they're broadcasting right now in other countries going, come on over. We'll hook you up. It's that's, it's the backbone of America. See, but what happens when middle America that's funding this shit when all of a sudden you have no middle class America, you literally just you you either because you won't even really have the wealthy unless you're on up in that upper tier. Because when it shits, even a millionaire right now is sucking ass unless he's already established with investments and shit. But just monetary wise, that it's so you're what what do you got left? Because you're not gonna have that. We, well, we see it right now with how much we've outsourced. We don't have a quality of a product. You can find very few American made products that say, okay, now I'm going back to putting in the quality of my work because people will go, oh, well, that you just want too much for that. And they won't go, but they, wait, you said, oh, you sat down and did that by hand. Oh, okay. They can get it cheaper on Timu. So that's, this well, is, I believe, uh, I believe I in options, man. Our image yeah. of America is what our thing is. We, we've, we've lost our identity. And the America that, that kind of, I sort of believe in, uh, it, it leaves a little bit of room for China. It leaves a little bit of room for Japan, you know, like on a fair, okay. um, like for example, let's look at stereos and people don't really buy stereos anymore, but like, let's, uh, stereos were the great example of this. Okay. You can get that that briefcase sized stereo that was made in america that was a decent stereo right if you wanted to pay a little extra you could get one that was the size of a 
of a Kleenex box that was made in Japan because Japan took American technology and made it smaller. That was their thing back then, if you remember, you know, so you could pay a little extra, get the smaller one and get a Japanese one. Or if you didn't give a shit and you had a beater car that you were driving to work with or whatever, like just get a Chinese one and it was a piece of crap and it didn't work very good, but at least you had something, you know, I believe that that should be there. There should be a niche market. There should be a place for everything. If you're going to, if you got grandkids visiting and you're going to, you're going to go to the beach one time, go buy the little Chinese plastic shovels and the little Chinese plastic buckets that the kid can play with on the beach. And when that trips over, just toss the shit in the garbage, you know, like there's, there's the China market right there, you know? Yeah. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with Malaysia, the Philippines. My, my only thing when it comes to the outsourcing, and I guess they, that's another word that's kind of been over well, the part. But now you're hitting the it, abuse you know, of it. Well, it, it's the drywall. And Trump actually brought up a very good example of it. And it was people in the hotel business he got a deal from China on some cheap-ass drywall that ended up having to be replaced within a few years. And he thought about it before he did it. And he said, now, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with this. And so, and it's that little thing. We don't, uh, we don't put the same standards you know, we've literally let them intentionally turn the tables against the American companies. Like when you think about it, you have to, to, okay, the plastic shovel that you just said, okay, in order to have the plant here to process those propylene pellets, produce that, get them, make them into pellets, then ship it over to this other plant that's now going to melt it down, pour it into molds. Well, see, you've got to meet all the epa the osha regulations but you can go over there in malaysia and they ain't got none of that shit and so all of a sudden that's why you can get that so much cheaper because over here you would have to charge more to cover all these damn regulations all that tax collecting shit that they do when they want to basically force corporate moves that's the way i view it that's they use those regulations to force the little man's out or to force you to sell and they're slowly doing that well it's no secret that the government and the corporate system together um the dude the the coof is was the final nail in the coffin i mean i knew that 30 years before of course but like the proof in the pudding was the jab like home depot and the and the neighbor owned hardware store uh, the neighbor owned hardware store it's got the coof in it you can't go in there you got to shut that down but Home Depot, oh man, you can't get you can't get the coof in Home Depot. It's it's a national chain. Like, well, yeah, don't go to the church. stock prices. If their stock price is more than this, you can't get COVID there. You know, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Like, were we that dumb? Like, and I, I mean, most of us saw that the second that they said it. But it's like, nope, nope. The the way to fight the coof in home depot is to put little duct tape arrows for the direction you need to walk in the aisle that's well, how you a stop three it. Foot, a three foot by four foot piece of plexiglass between yeah. you and the cashier you know but that doesn't work <clears throat> doesn't work in the independently owned hardware store though nope it, it won't stop it there but it'll stop it at the chain you know and that right there all by itself that right there is like 100 percent what the problem is you know i mean like it, it couldn't be more screwed up later widows make it a great day uh hutch it's, well the reason why it's cheaper to outsource this stuff is because all the regulations if you look at what it would take to build the plant all the permitting all the the layout the meet up to osha requirements to meet up the epa requirements to the agriculture environments and you're meeting all this and you're building the plant by the time you get to finally where you can produce a product the cost investment into that product is is so high that nobody wants to buy the damn thing because that's where you're going to end up with the hundred dollar shovel but you can go over there where they just go out there and pour some concrete on some damn dirt and they'll put a thing and they'll, they'll have people in there in damn tattered shirts and shorts and barefoot pouring that damn molten shit into molds. And they all box it up. They sit there in an, in half underwear shit and starving half to death, box that shit up, send it on into a distribution thing, come over here and then bam, some little, marketing thing takes over on distribution next thing you know it's on amazon 
that's and so it just we slow and it's slowly getting more and more that's why the processing of even milk and shit that they'll send that that's how crazy the regulations because that's all they do is they pass another little regulations well you now have to meet this osha requirement otherwise they fine you five thousand dollars a day well those companies invest a quarter million dollars to now do that osha improvement but people don't ever hear that stuff because that's not newsworthy anymore so you won't hear about any of that kind of stuff and with these labor unions slowly being pushed in on places oh look i think i just timed out did i just time out what do you mean i hear you okay i don't know all of a sudden it looked like i got a spinny wheel i'm like well damn there you go <laughs> Yeah, that would be when they do it, right? Right. But when you look at it, man, because if you establish so many rules, it's it's like look at all the laws on books in cities. That that's the judicial system at work. It, that's you won't hear about it until all of a sudden they need to use that law, and then you'll go, wait, that's against all. Yeah, that's against the law. And you look, and it might have been passed back in nineteen ninety two or some shit, but now all of a sudden it's used. You know, it just, it's, it's corrupt people, man. That's, I still go with, it's a people thing. Got to put better value people. That's, I was listening to Marjorie Taylor Greene, little interview with Tucker. That little chick's a firecracker. She even flat come out and told him going, everybody needs to be fired. Everybody in the whole damn administration, the whole damn, everybody, everybody, you know what? Me too. Everybody needs to be fired. You know, we need people in there that want to put America, this country, first i kind of was like there you go you go girl yeah <clears throat> ain't that the, the truth though man teach your kids and our grandkids in my case my grandkids that's the stuff i need to teach my grandkids so they'll be ready to address that as they come up because this shit ain't gonna get fixed overnight we didn't get this bad overnight but kinda here like, we are dude you know <laughs> morning here man. We are. except navy bit yep Morning, Miss Teresa. Well, it's, it's like getting addicts off dope, dude. You just, you know, you just don't take and do that with somebody on heroin. Not everybody's, most people don't survive that. So you, you, you can't do that. And these, everybody's been, we've been led this path over the dangly little carrots that have been shown, you know, the digital platforms, all these cool little shiny Ubers and get my food delivered. And I don't have to really worry about nothing. That's why I still find it funny because I don't mean no disrespect when it comes to prepping, but I thought that meant you're supposed to just take care of your shit and not rely on things like that. You know, that was, that would be preparedness. It's like, you, don't you just take care of your shit? Like, don't you, you know, I don't know. I don't have just one fucking flatheaded screwdriver. I've got dozens i got you know i even have 10 millimeter sockets because even when that one go randomly disappears i still got a backup i got his his kinfolk still pinned up in the drawer so even the yeah, it's kind of a Lord funny joke about that <clears throat> a little funny joke is there was a something that we got a couple of and i can't remember what it was exactly but there was uh in shrink wrapped in plastic against a cardboard backer it came with a 10 millimeter wrench you know <laughs> and i kept them they're still in the plastic and like sometimes i give them to people and they're like oh my god dude thanks thanks you know i'm it's like yeah deal. i i was thinking about you you know <laughs> what's up cherokee song of the south <laughs> yeah uh, ain't that the truth though but it's just, well, I, you know, it's like this. You just kind of do what you got to do, man. You know, I know that if the, I will say some of these local areas, though, it's been kind of a nice uh, seeing the reaction to some of these states and some of these local places with the whole uh, squatter story shit that started going around, you know, because of those sanctuary cities that have those batshit crazy laws and it's like Abbott had no problem coming down here. DeSantis is like, okay, just in the good old, who is that dude, Grady, out of Polk County, Florida? Is that his name, Grady? Oh, yeah, that, that sheriff? sheriff. Dude, that yeah. dude cracked me up. It was just like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> not down here, I would not recommend it. I'm like, there you go. 
Well, it, if you need to make a special deal for illegal immigrants to come here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the fact that California was like issuing driver's licenses and letting people vote and all this other bullshit. I mean, oh, like boy. that alone was was like it, there's no there's no penalty to being illegal. It's it's a benefit because you don't have to pay taxes, you know? I mean, well, that's why I don't agree with it. That's like I, I heard a matter of fact, was it? Who was it? Somebody, one of Hutch's interviews. That's where I, somebody had said something about felons. You know, if you're locked up, you should be able to vote. And I'm like, no, you ain't paying no taxes in being locked up. So no, you, you, you shouldn't get a say on what happens to taxpayers. And that's coming from a two-time person that I didn't get to vote for the longest part of my life. But in it, for the first part, I was okay with it because I understood the whole, I had no problem, I guess. That's what sets me kind of weird. I had no problem accepting my punishment. I, I pled guilty to my shit. I didn't fight it. It was like, damn, you busted me. Well, okay. And then matter of fact, the second time I went, they tried to put a bunch of shit. And I looked at that dude and go, dude, you ain't pinning all that shit on me. I'll tell you exactly what I did. And that's all I did. And because, you know, you just, I don't know, take your licks. You learn from it. It's whatever. It's kind of like the whole, you're free to choose. You're just not free from the consequences. And you just kind of got to be man enough to realize that. So you process that decision. Are you willing to pay the price? Eh, if I get caught, I guess it becomes illegal. Yep. Okay. Damn, I got caught. There you go. I ain't spending my family's thousands of dollars or some shit to fight shit and all that shit. I did it. There we go. Yeah. That's uh, my foray in illegal activity was rather short lived, you know, but uh, I, I had to, I had to play that tune a time or two, you know? Yeah. You know, you just, it is what it is. I Been there, done that, right? Yes, sir. Drink. Not all men like a boobs. So is ha boob? Is that a is that like a code word for ha boobs, or is that like an actual word ha boobs? Who said Something that? William, William William said not all men like ha boobs. So I'm just wondering, is that like a ha boobs? Like it really should have been two separate words or is that actual thing? Damn it. I almost oh. sound like pedaling a bicycle there for a minute. Yeah. Sewing machine. How are you liking that? Uh, it gets frustrating at times, but, but I like it, you know? Hey. Anything worth doing's gonna take effort. It's a dust. Hold on, she's it's a dust storm rescue low. Wait, what? There goes Lady Smith and the dang code work code word again. She's it's a dust storm, storm. rescue. Somebody's behind, I think. I think somebody's uh She's it's a dust storm rescue. That's a haboob. Is a haboob a dust storm? Uh, I don't know. Well, you're the Maybe. dust storm expert that I know of. So, I, I mean, I it, if I don't think I've ever heard that name before, but that doesn't mean it, that it's not accurate. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. And then Mister Meadows like, thank you, Lady Smith. So I don't understand. Okay. Hutch is not a fan of them, whatever the hell it is, because he says not a fan of haboobs, too much useless surface area. So now I'd see apparently it's not a dust storm. So now I pretty much really have no idea what the hell a haboob is. Sounds like an extinct bird, if you ask me. 
I'm thinking it's some drunk dude at a bar and he meant to say ha boobs and somehow somebody just interpreted it to be ha boobs or something. And I don't. Oh, here we go. We get a definition. Haboob uh, is a type of intense dust storm carried on an atmospheric gravity current at an atmospheric gravity current, also known as a weather front. So it's it, it's Arabic, I guess. For a dust storm. So. Yeah. Sounds like Bushido's counting his money. Now he's he's sewing up a money belt. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty easy for me to count my money right now. I definitely wouldn't need a machine to do it. <laughs> William says huge jazz boobs. Right? <clears throat> I don't know, maybe not not here. Maybe he thought it might be the trans type communication but oh lady smith says that, no that's a booby bb <laughs> yeah. it was the joke who boobs our boobs are strong dust on our sense right yep such, oh so they move such as the u.s southwest it's a haboob See, I, look, okay, let's break that down. Look at that here. I got, you know, here, let me get my little deal. I have to put this on screen. We got to break this down. So, haboobs, so there's a word, are strong dust and sandstorms. Well, there were, there was actually another descriptive word that kind of self-explanatory. So, why we needed to feel the need to create a word to say those words. And then we wonder how we get so fucked up on language. Well, why can't you just say a sandstorm? Why does it got to be a haboob? Why can't it be a sandstorm? It's sand. It's sand. Why can't it just be a sandstorm? Why did it have to be a whole other word? Well, you know, th a thousand years ago, we weren't connected by radio and television and internet. Oh, and yeah, like, radio put everybody here. We had intercommunication. We had computers back in the 1800s. But like, you know, you look at the same country. And they've got three different words for the same thing, but it's because the people on one side of the country, you know, a state the size of Ohio and people on one side of it are using a different word for bog. There's bog, there's marsh, there's, there's this, there's that, you know, what the hell is a holler? We still don't know. It's like, there's all these mystery words that pop up, but that all happened with local communication. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, those yeah, things still that's Go apparently ahead. an international thing because that's over there and it's also apparently all over here in the southwest u.s it's a haboob yeah i mean so see there was the inner intercontinental communication went along because apparently that word why we couldn't just keep it simple with the sandstorm philosophy but somewhere somebody decided to you know See, because it's not as simple as a potato, potato, or, you know, tomato, tomato type thing. This is like altering the whole damn word <clears throat> into a haboob. Which well, makes no sense when it comes to a sandstorm, because nothing about a sand, granule sandstorm, is haboobish. It's not boobish. So, I don't know where the ha and the boobs come from. Well, I always say exposure boobs in a sandstorm, so I don't even understand the connection there. Tomato, tomato, you know. The itty bitty habooty titty. The eye of the haboobs is the areola. <laughs> tomato, tomato. That's what I always say. Give me a mater. Take some tomatoes. So, well, it depends on where I go. I mean, if you go in a restaurant or something, then you got to be more cohesive. So then it becomes a yes, please. I'd like some tomatoes. 
But when I'm around intelligent enough people around me, then I can just say tomato and they understand. So. What you got there, Wars? Got some meat. Got some maters. Just need a little sprinkle salt. I like my biscuits with mustard on them. Uh. You need to go back up in them hills. Down here, we got gravy. Okay. The atmosphere did it to you. Now. So what are you sewing? Are you working on that thing which you had the little short thing on? Uh, I'm making another one, yeah. Is that the magazine holder? Yeah, yeah. I, I cut enough material to make uh, three standard ones and then three of the longer ones. And I said, man, I'll get one good one out of three. Well, I did the longer ones first, and I've kind of screwed up the two of them. They weren't how I like, so I figure this one I'll do perfect, right? I mean, what are the odds? Eight. That's just some about. Oh, well, simply, Tony's got, why do we need three theirs? Oh. Those are easy ones, though. We, we, they are there and there. It's really the existence of the word there, T H E R E, that, and I'd hate to give credit to the country folks, but the supplement of over yonder solves that whole debate, you know? <laughs> like, suddenly. It's not a problem anymore by using one half baked word. Who would have thunk it, right? Who would have thunk it? Hutches says, Why is Bill, Rob, and Dick the same name? I, what do you mean? Wait, Mets got Bill, Bob, Rob, and Dick is Richard. Yeah. Dick has been the short for Richard. I've never understood that. I didn't know Rob was the short one for Bill. The one I always thought was funny is uh, when you deal with Spanish, like they say, well, Pedro is how we say Ron. And I'm like, no, it isn't. You know, <laughs> like uh, I, I was working with these Polish guys and the guy said, well, my American name is Greg. And I said, well, what's your Polish name? And he said, Zagos. And I went, Zagos? He said, yeah, that's why my name is Greg, because it means Greg in Polish. And I'm like, um, no, it absolutely effing does not, bro. Like, why don't you just go by your real name? You know, like, I, I don't understand the ones that don't make any sense, you know? Oh, yeah. Gma Nana says, Lady Smith, I thought poke was a cigarette when my dad was in the Navy. They called cigarettes a fag. Well, that's the UK. Uh, they still do, I think. Well, a poke um, back in the Western days was the bag that held your loose tobacco, I thought, right? Well, yeah, I guess it would be depending on where, because there's some that's like the down here, 17, 1800s for there, a poke was actually knocking boots. So that's like you would go and you would go to a one of the women at the saloon and you'd pay for a poke. Oh, dude, it blew my mind in Australia. They called that get a root. Like, Oi, you want to get a root? And it's like, get a, uh, huh? Say that again. Right. Hey, actions. Get a root. What a, I don't know, man. Whatever. Get a root. No video. Hey. What you talking about, actions? If you don't see any video from me, bro, then you need to just go down there to the screen, and there's no red dot next to the word live. So click the word live, and you can get caught up. And in chat, go to go to live chat or all messages, and then you can get caught up in chat. And we'll see when you get here. Okay. <laughs> 
right. Hey, Rony. Really good nas, by the way. I'm reasonable. Wait, what are you talking about? Turning guns? Really good knives. Oh, I got my butcher knives are F Dick brand. Oh hell. Oh, Lord. What's up, Metal? Navy says, speaking of SIG, smoking lamp is lit. Smoke them if you got them. Unfasten your seat belts. Smoke them if you got them. So you're enjoying the learning to sew, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm nowhere close. I'm nowhere close to where I want to be. I mean, I'm, I got training wheels on, man. Uh, I'm not at like camo Carl status or nothing. So, and, and you know, at, with my age and all that other stuff, I may never be at camo Carl status, but uh, at least I'm, at least I'm better looking than him. Right. Well, I guess it would depend on who you ask. Everybody. But you could start with my mom. She'll tell you. That would be the one fan you might could count on. Although, I don't know. Carl might could win her over with that stash of his. <laughs> yeah, I did worry about that. When, right, right as I said it, I was like, what have I done? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to turn loose the stash. You might just go ahead and put a little wax on the end of that. And then, bam, you, that's it. He can also yeah. do that thing where, uh, where, where he can put his his leg up like a like a uh uh god what spoonbill seagull mm -hmm. and then he can go down and touch the ground with his ass and stand back up again with, on one leg and i can't do that I, when i saw that video i tried it a couple times and i was like okay you win <laughs> do the crane move yeah i was like yeah i think I think my knees have been a, a little too blown out for that movement. Right. Hey, uh, what what's the brand of your sewing machine again? A Juki. A Juki. Bug Out Adventures was wondering what type it was. Yeah, it's one of those Japanese like. It's not quite the industrial. It's it's industrial grade, but um, uh, they're. That's that's what Carl was talking about in that one video I put out. Like, there's a thing called a walking foot that the heavy industrial units have, and this one doesn't have that. I could have got it with it. Um, so the machine is that grade, but the the head is not. I have the heavy head, so this is an 8700H, but it's it's that gray area between a full industrial machine and a and like a regular machine. But for a regular machine, this thing is like a tank. But to an industrial machine, it's like entry level, if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, any point in getting the big industrial, if you that's not what the, the need is for. Well, I just simply couldn't afford it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, see, if you had a if you had like a bigger, you know, plan, a bigger idea, then it might have been worth some kind of investment, but starting out hey, you might not want to even do it anymore you might make you a few things and go man to hell with this shit no point in making that i would do the same thing if i well now cnc i'd love to so if i could get my hands on some i'd probably just go ahead and go full as big as i could get it <laughs> well this is uh i i am learning that i was thinking like man it would be great if i could get good enough at this that like this could be what i did to make money remotely but man uh right now with my speed and uh and a couple other factors involved there like i don't know 
I don't know if I could ever really truly turn a profit doing this unless I started doing some hot, big ticket items or something, man, because <clears throat> you know, the competition for, for the simple stuff is again, talking about China, like they can produce a shitty Chinese version of what I'm doing for the price of materials. You know, I mean, like I have, you can't compete with China when it comes to this shit. Right. Morning, fish sticks. Lady Smith has an old 30s singer. Yeah, those are the ways to go. Hutch is like Any a foot pedal singer is the shit. Well, yours has a foot pedal, doesn't it? Oh, you got that little leg thing, too. Well, dude, this has... Here, I'll show you. Hang on, let me get my camera set up. This always takes forever. Oh, God, here we go. Fine. Uh, facing back it has this leg thing to where what is it in a it'll raise the feet up or going over stuff or whatever and oh yeah yeah it's got that too but um this wait hang on let me uh turn this thingy on here okay bam this is uh it runs on a servo, right? You can see what I'm set on. Yeah. Three and feet. that's the max that it'll do. It's 34 feet. Right there. So Damn. I'm on like 350 and it'll do 3,450 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I am not even touching the capability of this machine. Now that's um, your foot pedal down there, right? It tilts. Yeah, yeah, that's the foot pedal. That's the knee of this. You you turn, and it lifts the presser foot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what I'd do without it, to be honest. I mean, it's, you know, I had one machine set up there that I messed around with a little bit. But, man, that this thing is just like, oh, my God. But man, this thing running off of a servo and being belt driven, it's it's kind of nice because I, I can set uh I can set how intense or not intense the experience is gonna be, and my foot um isn't disciplined enough yet that I have complete the, the thing will get away from me sometimes, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'll uh I'll step on the pedal and I think I'm stepping on it a little bit and it just goes full tilt and, <laughs> and it got a little power to it. Well, if I did that and it was set at 3,450, it would shoot the piece of material through the freaking window behind me. You know what I mean? Like it's, but, it's like ready to go. If you were, if you were doing like a, a tent or you were doing something a long run, then that would be good because then you would just be running it through and it would be like boom and you could just dude, yeah you could cover some distance quick and you just let it pile up on the other end of the table as it's doing a whole scene boom. you can knock out and some shit i mean eventually that's uh eventually i might be able to make good on that and cash in on it but right now man not so much you know <laughs> it's a yes, it's a sweet. bigger machine than me let's put it that way but if i grow into it and i get to where i'm using it i'm not going to be limited by my machine i will always be limited by my talent and my skill you know See, there you go that's the that's there you go i i hate being limited by a tool that's which in a way i guess it well some things is not so bad because it makes you think of a different way to, to solve something. But in some instances, you just have to have a better tool. It'd be like that. You just have, you know, it's better to have a better tool. And, and uh, you got one you can grow into. So see, that's a good thing. Instead of having one that you kind of get and you're like, yeah, this is cool. And then you really want to do more, but you can't, you're being held back. And going back to, um, uh, what lady Smith was talking about, I think it was, um, she's got like a 1930s singer and the two ways to go. Well, I'll say there's three ways to go. So for the new market, the, the best bang for the buck is this Juki. Okay. 
um, in the used market, there's a Mitsubishi that is really similar to this one that uh, you can get it for about half the price. But I didn't want to trust a used machine, uh, especially being my first machine. Like if I got another one later, I would look into like a used uh, Mitsubishi or the other trick is to find a vintage sewing machine because all the gears are steel. So if you get a vintage like 30s to like 60s uh, Singer or, um, you know, some of the other name brands like the the gears are steel and they're inadvertently what is now considered like tough guy grade. That was every sewing machine back then, though. You know what I mean? That's kind of when we built things to, to work better. Mm hmm. Because people and, uh, used to take pride. Companies took pride in building that quality item. Now they put the money in the computer that controls what kind of stitch it is or whatever, and uh, they put plastic gears in it. Well, I mean, that's that's cool and all, but, like, what if you want the tough machine, you know? I mean, <laughs> right. you're, you're kind of asked out if you're – because, like, uh, for example, this thing did – I, did I show you the oil pan in this thing? No. You got an oil uh, pan? <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Uh, so you, is it is it okay. thirty weight, fifty weight? <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh yeah, no. can you see down there? Oh yeah. See it dripping in there? Yeah. The whole bottom of this machine is a giant freaking oil pan. Oh wow! Check that out. So if I run it, this was the reason why I looked at this one because if I tax it. And, uh, and I run it harder than I should because I'm an idiot, which I mean, let's face it. Uh, I kind of am, um, welcome back. If, here, Billy. if I abuse this machine, it won't burn out on me because it runs oil through the machine. It won't get too hot. It won't get burned out. It, it can, this thing is going to do what I need it to do. And if it, if I'm pushing it hard, like a rented mule, it'll just keep going. And, uh, so what's the thing got like a little drain tube that lays down in that pan and then cycles it through the different parts of the machine and it just keeps doing that kind of like a damn little fountain? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, and wow. uh, so it's uh, that's, that's, cool. that's the part of this that really got me wanting to to do this because I'm like, I'm not going to know what's too much. I don't have the experience to know if I'm pushing this too much or not. You know. So that lack of experience I could make up for by getting a machine that could outdo me forever. You know, I mean, like I will never be able to, to tax the ability of this machine with what I'm doing. So, so there I go. You know what I mean? I'm with metal goes, wow. I had no idea. sewing machines had an oil pans. I know, right. I, I did not ever think of a sewing machine having, having an oil pan. I can see them needing to be serviced. You know, you want to grease the bearing here and put your little lube maybe on this. Should have to actually have a little oil pump that's actually pumping this stuff through the system. That's. Well, that was one of the cool things about this that made me uh, look this direction, if you know what I mean. I did some research, man. And I'm not going to say that I'm like, I'm definitely uh I'm definitely in the dangerous Dunning Kruger phase of sewing where uh, all of my illusion of competence is probably bullshit. So <laughs> let, let me begin with that. But, uh, but from the research that I did, it, it really pointed me to this machine and there were, were people that were sewing that were, that were doing it for a living that, you know, they were like, yeah, I was doing professional sewing for, you know, five years until I finally ponied up the dough to buy one of these. Cause you know, I mean, these things are like a thousand bucks, man. I mean, they're not cheap, you know? Um, and I, I bought one They're They're probably actually a little more than that, but I bought it in pieces. You know, I bought it unassembled in, in crates, you know, and I had to put this whole thing together, save right. me about 400 bucks. So I paid myself $400 to build this machine, but I understand it a little better now too, because I built it. You know what I mean? Right. Well, this is true. I know, right? Hillbilly's like, is it a turbo too? And then you want to wait to see the little exhaust with a turbo hooked onto it. 
that's where the 30 what is that 3450 comes in i dude i haven't i i've turned that knob up about about four notches and i can't i i can't use it you know <laughs> like it, it, i can't even touch a thousand and and use it you know so i i only i can only guess what 3500 feels like holy shit dude that must be for like if you were doing i don't know damn tarp or a parachute or some shit to where because if it moves yeah. that fast it would i mean if you were sewing two tarps together and you did it on 3450 um you would probably sew it in about two or three seconds just zip, 10 feet right there you know see that's what a trip fuel injected sewing machine just about Boy, that servo kicks it up. Okay. I just did one of the annoying parts. It just, man, the speed is what's trip. Because, I mean, yeah, when you kind of look, what would you do? I mean, the, it would have to be something like those big air balloons or something. Where you got like, you know, 40, 50 feet of a run and you're just kind of going... Yeah, because you wouldn't be. I mean, your reaction time, like, well, let me ask you this, because I don't know, because I hadn't used it. But so when you stop, like when you take your foot off, does it like instantly stop like a brake stop kind of or does it kind of slow yeah. down? Stop? No, no, no. It's uh, it's it's done when when you let go because the servo controls it. So it's not like on a regular machine. Um, it's controlled by uh. But the the further you push it, the harder it runs. You you slow up, it lets go, and it has the whole range of operation in that pedal. The servo controls how much juice the motor puts out. So I could set it to where right now I think what it's set on. If I push the thing down all the way, it goes three hundred and fifty stitches per minute. I think it is. So I can slam on that thing. The, the whole way down and I'm only going to get 350. But if I turn the notch one more time, and this is what was messing me up because I was used to 350 and I can turn it up to like 660, which is the next one, right? Full is now no longer 350. Now full is three or 660. So halfway is the max of what it was the, the click before it, because the servo is a, uh, it's it is like a turboprop airplane. The servo is always running on this thing, and the pedal releases and gives it permission to move the belt. It's already doing its thing right now. Like as long as the red power lights on, it's it's ready to go. You know, so you're kind of like so. Then the foot pedal is kind of like that, uh, like a centrifugal type grab on a belt where it's running. And then as yeah. you close that, it's tightened on that, and then it starts to pick up, and the tighter you grab, the faster it goes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you kiss off and rabbit and them are yeah, all saying. Good morning. Okay, I'm going real quick. I'm gonna okay. go get my eye exam done. Give me one sec. I'll be right back. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know. This is uh I just hope I get faster at this. That's all. I think if I could get faster, I'd be okay. But I don't know how long that takes. I'm not sure how long that takes. But it'll be nice when it happens. If it Because right now... uh. If I could sacrifice speed for quality, I would probably do it, but I have neither right now. You know, I'm making stupid mistakes and then uh, I'm having too much random crap go wrong. You know, stuff that like if I knew what I was doing, I might understand a little better, you know, but uh, it's just coming off like a mystery to me because I don't I don't know enough about sewing to know like, oh, that's a problem here. or That's a problem there. And, uh, hey, tell me, hey, Grumpy. I guess it's time to go. I'll get better. 
No, dude, dude, it'll be practice. You start getting the feel of the different material. <coughs> start kind of, and it's actually, you probably got to step up in a way to other beginners per se, using that word, is because you did put it together. So you kind of got the workings and now you're going to put it to use and start getting the different feel of the different materials and different shit. I mean, I think it's a good thing. I think you're going to do good. That's why as long as you're interested in it, you know, as long as it's got your interest in. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely got that, but like I said, man, um, figuring out all this dumb crap that goes wrong is it definitely <laughs> like it just did it right now. And for the life of me, I don't, I don't know why it does what it does, but it does, but it do. It does. It, it does what it does. Yeah. Said you should go to SOE for a week and apprentice in the sewing shop. I mean, I would, uh, I mean, hopefully it'd be nice if that dude would actually talk to me. I met him, you know, and like, he just like looked at me and I was like, <laughs> all right. Uh, you know, uh, Chris Key introduced me to him and he just stared at me and I was like, oh, you're not going to say anything. Interesting. You know, Dang. like that, that's cute. That Sonny Bazingas guy was with him too. And th that dude did the same thing. And I'm like, so everyone's just going to look at me. And, uh, not say a word. Fantastic. Awesome. Oh, Happy no. to be here. The mental dick measuring things or something. Uh, well, now, okay. For John from SOE, uh, he was putting on the prepper fest. It's like the Catalina wine mixer of prepper events in the area. I don't blame him for having other shit on his mind. Let's, let's get that right out in the open. You know, um, this was his big coordinated effort he and in his mind he's juggling speakers and who's going on next and who's doing this and who's doing that he didn't have time to meet some shit heel like me that like you, you know i don't have a product i don't have a channel i don't have anything i'm like basically nobody and he's like yeah any other day i'd love to meet this guy but i got shit to do pretty much was like i, I could see it on his face you know you know be safe sherber keep your head so, on switch so yeah, I mean that's that's a factor. Now Grumpy knows him a little better. I wonder, man. Like I probably would take a few days off and go there and apprentice with him just to learn some shit. You know, I really would do that. That's a great idea that I never thought of. And uh, shit. That night you could. I don't know if Carl is a uh, road traveling now because he if he's finally got everything squared away, but. Hell, you can get Carl to come down there. He could park up and then show you kind of all kinds of lessons, too. Man, he did that. I don't know if y'all saw the Carl thing with the boats, but that dude did that. He talked about that boat one day on my stream, and it was like just a few days later. All of a sudden, he's doing this little video on all that shit that was done. It was like, holy shit, dude, he did that, knocked it out. Shit looked brand new. These seats and the floor and all this stuff. Oh, he says, Grumpy said, not friends, just acquaintances. I'll hit him. I'll hit him up and see if he's up for the idea this weekend. Right on, Grumpy. There you go, bug out. Yeah, that'd be a big ace in the hole. And speaking of which, man, dude, if Carl was good at working on boats, this place that I'm at here, this is the place to be if you can so, uh, because the sun destroys all the canvas, you know, especially like pontoon boats and stuff that have like the rag tops and everything. Dude, There's always he, people looking to have that redone. That's what he did. He redid the whole decking, the carpeting on the deck redid all the upholstery on the seats and on the back breast and you know all them how they got them little panels of cushions on you know to the side and stuff and redid all that shit dude and it was like damn
Oh, damn, Sherry Bear says I have to drive from the sticks to right by the O'Hara Airport. Whew. That's Chicago. No way, no. There you go, Sherbert. With your head on a swivel. Peripheral vision. Well, hey, sir. I hate to leave good company. But I think I'm going to shut this down. No, that's all right. I'm uh, perpetually distracted anyway. So I'm not as, I don't know if I'm ever fun, but I'm not as fun as I normally am if i am you know oh, shit dude i uh, i enjoyed all the conversation i think you ought to set a little thing up though where you could even catch the i think you ought to do your your sewing you don't actually have to show yourself but set it up like you were showing the machine only have it do that where you're doing the sewing i think you would people would watch um if, if once i get better i might actually but uh you know, <laughs> right now, uh, it, you'd probably just see me cuss and throw shit. And, uh, like I just busted my thread right now. So, I mean, there's always something going wrong, which I guess is part of the experience, but, you know. Uh, Grumpy says, Bushido shoot all ass hacks, AKA Darren. If he'd be willing to show you for a week this summer, you could road trip it to Kansas and hang out. Yeah, that or I mean, dude, that that SOE guy, uh, I mean, that's pretty much exactly in the wheelhouse of like the stuff I want to be making. And really, like, I, I wouldn't necessarily even be a uh, a professional threat to him because the whole strategy of why I'm doing this is completely different than what he's doing, you know? Well, yeah, like, you're not doing it for a living, you know, you haven't. It's not like the start the business thing. You're just trying to get your stuff squared away and learn more. Well, and I mean, I may have a business interest in this eventually, but the reason why I'm doing this is because the people that make this stuff, they, uh, they, they do it. Um, they, there's, and it's price related. I get it, but they only do it in like four colors, you know? Uh, you know, they do green, they do tan, they do, uh, multicam and they do black. Well, I want to buy those things and I want that stuff, but I want it in other stuff. I want it in other colors and other patterns and all that kind of crap, you know? And, uh, and I'm like, why does nobody do this? You know, why does nobody make this? So I guess I'm going to be the guy that makes it there you as go. it turns out. So well, you always have those businesses, you know, you have the kind of the people that cover like the, the general stuff, but you'll have them little one-off people that make stuff and you kind of go, you find them out and you go, Oh, well, no, there's this dude that makes this and it's like, you know, a good knife holster or something, or there's always those people that'll, you just got to get people to talk and share that. That's, that's where we go back to <laughs> grumpy says that SOE does millions of dollars a year in business. I don't think John sees too many people as a threat to his market space. No, and I, it's, but see, you gotta, I mean, hell, the bear independent with the refuge medical, they, they do the made in America bags. I mean, for all I know, he gets them, they're doing, I don't know. I know he talks with them, but see, that's, they do them. So there's nothing wrong with people wanting to just make their shit. I think it'd be cool if that dude could show you stuff to kind of get you squared away. And then you're kind of like, oh, okay, I got this. And you got a feel and bam, bam, bam. And you can then take your imagination and go to town. Oh, shit. I was still muted. Um, <laughs> Best conversation no, I, ever. A guy like John, uh, I, I don't know who the other guy is that he's talking about, but I know a dude like John, he could teach me a lot, you know, and I, I would, by the time I did it, I would hope to be at the experience level that, uh, 
that what he was teaching me would even make sense, you know? And I, I learned that because like teaching people how to shoot, for example, which I'm not super in practice with. Uh, so it's a perishable skill, but like the things I know about shooting, uh, when I'm teaching somebody to shoot, I'll teach them things and they take it and they just instantly throw it away because at the, the entry level, they're like, uh, I, I don't need to know that. That's like, I don't know why he's telling me this because later what I'm telling you is going to make sense. But right now it doesn't, you know, like you're just trying to hit the target at like a hundred meters right now. And I'm trying to tell you tips for like shooting 600 meters with the same rifle. You know what I mean? And, uh, I don't know. There you go. I, oh. What, what he'd be gone. teaching me if, if I went there now would be stuff that would just go right in my head and right out because I was, I'm not at that level yet. If you know what I'm saying. Right. Grubby said that John is the reason they started their business. He told him to, f- make freeze dried skittles on wednesday night live years ago so he's willing to share his knowledge with people that want to learn well cool. i want to learn but can i learn is the question well you're capable of doing whatever you want to do i mean that's that's the bottom line of it you can read and write and you can he- listen so at that point, it's just how, how bad do you want to do it? Oh, I definitely would want to give it a go. I know then, that. Then that would mean you would be capable of doing it. Dude, you done been deployed and come back. Look at all the other shit you've managed to accomplish. This is just, just one more little thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not intimidated by this, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not kicking my ass or nothing. So definitely not worried there. That's, I'm just saying like, uh, if I showed up today and sat down and told John, like, all right, dude, let's do this. I'm, I'm worried the stuff that he would teach me today I wouldn't be savvy enough to understand. That's what I'm worried about. But I think uh, you give it a, a, a like a month or two or three, I'd be fucking ready to go, man. If I keep, because I'm, I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much every day that I do this, you know? So like, I'm definitely giving myself the crash course, if you know what I mean. Oh, wow. Sorry, I just got a little distracted. I got I got a message, and then I was looking at these pictures, and man, the snow is thick as all, but I don't know. That's no shit. I love Texas. More than rock steady. But I get it. Yeah, because, well, actually, you know what, dude? I, I ran into that. That's actually why I shut down my computer shop. Not the reason, but that was one of them because the public was that way with computers. They would have a problem and you, you, I would explain it. And, but then after a while, I realized that what I'm saying, just kind of going in in one ear and out the other, because you don't, you know, you're not even here yet. And sometimes you'd see that in, in some of the rural training on the firefighting because it's just like, no, don't we just go in there? Nope. That's not how this works. And then you start breaking down, you know, wind directions and the whole vegetation scale. What's the, you know, uh, humidity level. What's been that level. What's the dry. And they're just like, Oh, I thought we were just going to put water on it. It's like, we're going to get there. And then everything you say just kind of goes in. So I could kind of see where he just started getting bombarded with all this information. Only so much is going to stick at first until you kind of got at least the basics and then you can kind of assemble that shit in your own little order. What's up, Monique, little maple leaf? Good morning. By the way, if you're talking, you're muted. Yeah, I, uh, 
I'm just kind of processing. Well, hey, I'm fixing to shut it down. I need to, I'm going to, I'm going to eat something. And then I need to lay down for just a little bit. And then I got to get out there and work on the whole little ditch and shit. And, no, that's cool, man. I, I mean, you know what I'm doing right now. And then I got to get the dog out a bit and, you know, all that regular shit. I got to plant like 50 blueberries sometime this weekend too. Look at you, man. I'm glad the missus done left because she had heard that. Hell, she brought that up the other day. We were talking about the this little spot back here. And I was like, yeah, we could do some blackberry blueberries. And I'm like, wait, no, not blueberries. Blackberries would be real easy. And then she's like, well, I don't know blueberries. And then, yeah, she's wanting those. You like blueberries? I mean, I do. I'm a, Crocs gave me a flat of them, you know, and, uh, Crocs gave them to me and I got them and I'm going to pot some of the more promising looking ones, uh, to maybe save them for later. If you know what I'm saying. And then, uh, all the other ones I'm going to put along my fence line and kind of let them feast or famine. They make it or they don't, you know, but, uh, you know, nature's barbed wire type deal. Just get some bushes growing on the fence line there. You know what I mean? There you go. We used to have a neighbor that on that corner of the lot, the people that owned the other property, they put a chain link fence up and it was solely for him to plant her blackberries. And those blackberries used to get so thick and dude, blackberry uh, pie, muffins, jam, all kinds of stuff. That woman used to make all kinds of stuff. I, I'm, I like blackberries, blueberries, no, no, raspberries are okay. Everything has its place, I guess, but blueberries are pretty good. Are they hard to grow? Like, is that one of them sensitive kind of things? Well, I mean, I've noticed the price is definitely, uh, I mean, they don't seem to be cheap, but what I've noticed with any of the Bush family, you know, any, anything that ends in berry, you know, to include strawberries, you put them somewhere and they're going to live or they're going to die, you know? And if you understand that, like out of 50, I'm thinking I might actually get five or six that make it. And I'm David, the good style. I want them to make it. And I don't want to have to baby them. Like I want them to just survive, you know? Right. So we'll see what happens, you know? There you go. The more prominent ones, I'm going to pot them and I will baby those because like, you know, with this whole like house thing with the Arkansas situation and all that, if I could keep one in a, a few of them in a pot for, uh, for a year, hopefully, hopefully I'm out of here in a year, but maybe two years tops, you know, um, I, I wouldn't mind bringing some of those with me and getting them started over there too. You know, there you go to continue the legacy, you know, hell yeah. So we'll see. We shall see. But when uh when are you off again? Uh I'm off tomorrow and Saturday, but uh tomorrow I gotta do my taxes, so I probably I won't be around. If I'm in if I'm in here on Saturday and not drafted to do something, um I uh I might be able to talk for a bit. Okay dope. Well, then we might, we might Saturday. Cause yeah, I don't, I don't, I doubt I'm on tomorrow just because after I have to finish doing this ditch thing, I'm just, I'm probably just going to go and do myself, yeah. my internal whining while I just lay there. That's awesome. Monique. So the, her water test came back. So the homestead is all systems go. That's bad ass. They found an awesome place. I mean, it's Where? in Canada, but it's still an awesome place. Where's it at? And up in Canada, it's Monique, where they were at. She, they, she found this, uh, what is it? I think it was three acres, right, Monique? I think it's like three acres or so. I don't know. Actually, that might have been 30 acres or something, but it's a, it's a beautiful layout. I think it's three. I don't know. Now I feel bad because I forgot five acres. There we go. My bad. 
but it's a cool uh, older house, but it's got a awesome landscaping for like garden and all kinds of good stuff. It's got the well. It's a good little off-grid kind of place. Very cool. It's a good thing for her where they're at. So that's, it'll be a peaceful place for, for them to be. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and call it. I, I, I know I said that and I don't, I don't mean to be rude or nothing. Uh, I might holler at you Saturday, Phil, if you feel like shooting the shit. You're muted, by the way. He's sewing. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, what I said is uh, it, it's all good. And it hit me up on Saturday. And we'll see what's happening. I just might be able to do that. Roger that, brother. All right. We'll be safe and keep your head on a swivel. All right, man. Yep. I'll talk right. to you later. Later, man. See you. Later, brother. All right, chat. Yeah, I'm going to call it. Um, Hey, try to do the best you can today. Make a good day of it. Uh, and I was, I will see you when I see you kind of thing. I got, I just take this as it comes because I just got so much physical shit I got to do. So if it's feel like shit, then I just don't get on here. I'm not going to translate that feeling like shit. So I will holler at y'all soon. Let's see. Where's my little deal? Here we go. Y'all make it a good day. I appreciate you.
raise your babies by the book And keep my picture in your wallet Keep your car keys on a hook Do your best to get it right Forgive yourself when you don't Please don't ever forget how much I love you I appreciate everybody being here. You're the one in the driver's seat. Remember, make it a good day. All of us, thank you. Everybody else, I appreciate y'all. Keep your head on a swivel. Peace.